yeah, we got the six year guys like Vitmeyer and Bianca. I'm like, bro, I'm a, I'm a normal senior. <laughs> he goes, and he goes, are you really? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I swear. And he goes, no. I don't even know this one. Do you know Hideki had a huge porn collection? <laughs> See, all, all he just made that up. No, nope. he's Google it, Google it, Google it, Google it. What did y'all give him this morning? <laughs> he is off the racks over here. He asked me specifically for five answers when I gave him. Didn't give it to him. I, I was confused. Oh, look out, Mikey's hit and down he goes. Man. He is not happy at all. That is the second time that Mikey Matuk has been hit in this game, but this. Get it, bro. I had a 7 or 7.30 uh, exam in the morning. So I'll walk outside. I'm like, I know, walk to my, I'm like walking to my car and I'm like, damn, I'm not, not kind of sore I parked over here. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm like, what? Nah, maybe it's not here. I'm going to go look around over here. Bro, I walked like three parking spots like in the, in the direction I thought I probably parked. I'm like, fuck that. I know I'm parked <laughs> right here. Kids still doing that. And out there playing for hours instead of just chilling on the video games. Yeah. Awesome to see chilling on that. the video games. <laughs> Did you just age oh, fifty five thousand yeah. years? Well, we call them Fortnite game? nerds. Yeah, you know, chilling Fortnite on the video nerds. games. I mean, chilling like playing video games. That's Fucking the way to gaming. say it. Yes. You think an old man would say chilling on the video games? That's what you just yeah. said. Yes. You think an old man would say chilling? On the video games? On the video like that, games? Yeah. Well, oh well. I'm you're an old man. man. I'm, if you want, well, you're, I'm not you're, a gamer. You're getting older. I mean, I guess Mikey. I am. Good evening. Oh, not yet. I can't hear it now. Oh, you're on. Good evening. Yeah. Welcome back to Miked Up. Today is Monday, October 24th. Uh, about seven hours ago, I didn't know if I was going to be able to speak today because my voice was uh, a little lost. Couldn't yeah, find you it. You kind of got me sideways on that one. I was expecting to listen, it was, worse. Listen, when I woke up this morning, and I woke up yesterday, and I woke up this morning, I, I thought I was going to have to be here physically, and I thought you guys were going to have to fucking talk because I didn't <laughs> know if I could do it, right? But... Uh, I'm here. Right now, My no voice way. is here. I'm ready to go. We're brought to you by Sterling Automotive. And boy, do we have a good show today, right? I appreciate y'all joining us an hour earlier. This is the last Monday that we will go early. Um, it is the flag football playoffs today. Starts today. Today and tomorrow, then it's over. Um, so our game's at 8. I wanted to get ready. I didn't want to, I didn't want to cut the show short like I have been doing on Mondays. Huh? Today and tomorrow, back to yeah, back. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, they handle that. Um, so I wanted to have it a little earlier. Oh, that's why, because it was a little low. Was a little yeah, low. I, got you, I got you tuned up over here. I don't know, I just wanted to, I couldn't hear in my ears. But, um, but boy, we have a good show. We have Brody Miller coming in studio at 5.30. Well, we have... Video call. I mean, video call. Video call at 5.30. At 16, we have Eileen... Eileen... <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. You would reach out to Shaq? Eileen Natchik, <laughs> who is a so uh, anchor sports reporter for NBC 33 and Fox 44. She covers the Saints. She's going to be in, in studio talking everything Saints, ask questions about the feel of the locker room, uh, what did Alvin Kamara really say in his speech to the team, uh, and just kind of get the vibes and, and kind of see what's going on. Talk about injuries, talk about when we're going to get all the guys back. Because as bad as the Saints are playing, they're still in it. They're only one game out of the division. Uh, because the Bucks are not playing well, the Falcons got their ass beat by the <laughs> Bengals again, and the Panthers stink. But the Panthers and Panthers stink, but the don't, Panthers and the don't Saints tell the the, Panthers they, stink. they have the same record. That's cool, <laughs> not cool. But uh, we're, we're gonna get we're gonna get all the answers from her. <laughs> and we were wrong about the Seahawks. Yeah. So and far. we were wrong about the Seahawks. So far, I, like I'm still, I'm still sticking to it. So far, but 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 that's not the name. That's not what we want to start the show off with. All right, what happened this weekend? Um, I think something happened. Felt like I it. felt like something happened this weekend. Maybe too much. Uh, I mean, my voice is. Did it little... happen this weekend or did it continue this weekend? Mm. Mm. Are we it continued. <laughs> hey, it's amazing what happens when you say, "Hey, well, first of all, I want to say coaching matters. It one million percent matters, right?" And I think that we have gotten, we as in fans, have gotten um, our our minds and the way we look at this team a little skewed based off of the last couple years, right? You see the talent on that we have and you see what goes on. You just assume 
that, oh, it's going to be the same thing, right? Well, we have a new head coach who has understood winning for a very long time, and he has won for a very long time. And the whole time, he preached a process. He preached what he was trying to do, and he told you it was going to take time. Whole new team, whole new coaching staff, new quarterback, 40 new players, all these things. And my great co-host here, we have talked about this plenty of times, is it takes a little time mm. to build a chemistry within the locker room, right? This beautiful tanned man Look from the him. beach. From the beach. The lighting here is perfect. Lighting here is great. Lighting is great. But my point Good is coaching See your ass in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> coaching matters. It does matter. It matters, right? It does and matter. What you're starting to see <clears throat> is you're starting to see a team buy into the process and buy into the coach, which I'm glad Brody Miller is coming on the show because he wrote an article for The Athletic talking about the process and how you're starting to see and reap the, the rewards and the benefits of the process, right? And everybody talks, well, it's the process, it's this. Like, everybody says that, it's cliche. Yeah, yeah, but it works. Yeah. Cliches don't become cliches for no <laughs> reason. They work. It's cliches are a thing and, because they and, work. And to add to that, a lot of people know processes. It's another thing to follow through on them. Yes. Day in and day out. And to, and to understand, not waver through the course of the season yeah. just because there's some hiccups that happen, right? Yeah. You go through the first game of the season, yeah, it wasn't pretty, right? But you sh- we, we talked about it here. You see things. You saw the team fight back as bad as they played. They made winning plays. Unfortunate that it was a misassignment or it was a miscommunication. It was a whatever. Miss the extra point, lose the game. You do some other things. You win some ugly games. You get back. You get behind some teams. You make some comebacks, and you get your ass beat by Tennessee, right? Everybody's like, well, maybe Brian Kelly's whatever. He admittedly said, you know what? There are some things I did in that game, coaching-wise, that I probably shouldn't have done. But as a whole, it wasn't as bad as the score indicated, which is we talked about as well. Then you go the next week and you play against on the road at Florida. Nobody really knew what to expect. Jaden Daniels, you start to see the progression of the season. I say, hey, you know what? You're sitting in the pocket more. Even against Tennessee, sat in the pocket more, maybe missed some throws. Okay, Florida, best game of the year that he played over there. <clears throat> sat in the pocket, made throws, ran the ball when he had to. Then you play Ole Miss, who's undefeated at home, ranked seventh in the country. They get out to a 17-3 lead, and you outscore them 42-3 to to end the game, and you beat – an undefeated top 10 team at home by 25 points, right? To me, that shows you every, that tells you everything you need to know about Brian Kelly and the coaching staff because they have done things throughout the course of the year and it's starting to accumulate and it's starting to accumulate. And now the boys are in a position Jelling. to win the West, which everybody said when I said, oh, there's hope, there's hope. You, the best thing you can give a team is hope. Everybody's like, oh, you're giving them hope. But first, they gotta play, first, they got to play Alabama, and they got to play Ole Miss, and they got to play Arkansas. And, like, now you look at it, and you're like, hmm. Mm, they, um, wait a minute. Now Alabama's favored by 16 no, and a half. 17 if you're lucky. 17 if you bet like me and Lloyd did before last <laughs> week's game. <laughs> before the Ole Miss game, it was 17. I have a feeling it's going to go down a couple, two or three more points. But you play them at home, and you have a night game, and you have an opportunity – to do everything that you sought out to do. I would assume Alabama is probably going to be the last game on the schedule that we are going to be underdogs on. I would assume, right? So um, I'm gonna, we're going to get more into that. That is just what I wanted to start to show off. We're going through the Heineken headlines. I'm going to come right back to it. I just want to hit on some other things. World Series matchup is set. Uh, uh, Aaron Nola beat Austin Nola. The Phillies are going to the World Series. I am fired up for them. Astros are going to the World Series. You get a Nola Bregman, teammates at LSU. They get to play each other in the World Series. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be electric. I think I said before the the, world, the the playoffs started, watch out for the Phillies. They're the hot team, the hottest team. Sometimes it's not always the best team. Sometimes it's always the, hot, it's the hottest team. They have a lot of talent. They gel at the right time. I have a lot of friends on that team, so I'm very excited to watch them play in the World Series. A lot of guys have had a lot of tough years as far as winning and losing, and now... Arduous. Yeah, tumultuous. Arduous, tumultuous. Um, and so I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped about them. Um, but we're going to start the show off with LSU because I want this conversation to lead into the Brody Miller conversation, right? Um, we started the game off with a special teams blunder, right? Offsides, we missed the field goal. That's just right on, on the cue kick. to start. That's just on... That's, but then after that, <laughs> after that... They played really well special teams-wise. There was no other mistakes, good coverage. They had a couple good returns. Missed a field goal. Yeah, but that's not – I mean, that's that's not – No, 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 no. But 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they play better as far as special teams go. He got a standing ovation on the catch and the punt. Was that the first Bronx cheer you've heard in Tiger Stadium? That was, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I knew, we, we, I said, you know what, if, if, if he catches this, he's going to get an ovation, right? So, oh, um, Greg Clayton back there. I don't it, want nothing to do with any of this. Mm-hmm. I didn't ask for any of this. It was uh, it was a very fun game. I, look, down 17-3. I never really lost confidence in the game. I, I, re- I didn't think that we were out of it at 17-3, but I knew when you got down 17-3, you had to go down there and score a touchdown there because you drove the ball, well, you moved the ball, mm-hmm. and it was just you know just the way it went. When but, you watch, When you watch teams like Ole Miss play – like, it's weird because they 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 play a very old school game in a new school, in a new school kind of way. Meaning, like they run the ball a lot, right? Teams that run the ball like that much, that are like that run dominant, even when they get up seventeen three and up by two possessions and three, they, you don't feel like they're that far ahead because they don't really hit you with explosive plays like down the field. So right. they give they, they give you opportunities to get back in the game in a sense because they play a slower game. Yeah. And that's what kind of happened, and, and I think really I th- flowed the other way. I think what you saw was the offense. I think offensively, you knew, or LSU knew that they were going to be able to move the ball. I right. think they had confidence that they were going to be able to do what they wanted to do offensively, and move it on Ole Miss. Now we talked about all right to win this game. I want to see you need to stop the run. Like they're going to try to run. If you run the ball for 400 yards. Ole Miss came out and flipped the script early on. They said, we're going to go out there and yeah. we're going to we're going to throw it. Lloyd said that. We were going to try to throw this football. Tennessee flip. And they did. And they threw the ball and they had a couple um, you know, a couple of, of big plays in the passing game. But but that the way they were going about those things, I didn't think that that – if they could do that, I thought that that was going to be – we're going to be able to adjust to that, right? If you're running the ball down your throat, that's harder to adjust to because it's like – they're Keep control- doing it. Yeah, they're controlling everything. It's kind of demoralizing, mm-hmm. right? We kept their running backs to three yards a carry, right, for the game. So they ran for 400 yards the week before. They only ran for 100 and something, right? Uh, they had a, they threw the ball a, a good amount, and they're pretty efficient. Now Jackson Dart is prone to making interceptions and making <clears throat> th- taking risks. Should have thrown two. Should have thrown three. Mm-hmm. Should have thrown three. Actually threw one, changed the game for us. Really made it, kind of put the game out of hand. Pusha, nice to see you. One-handed. Welcome one-handed. to the party. Great play. And it wasn't, hey, I'll say this, team. great play, but great, even better play by Baskerville. Like, once they started heating up and putting pressure on Jackson Dart. I think I know where you're going with this. Yep. Jackson Dart struggled, right? And if you go and listen to, I mean, obviously, everybody can look at it with their eyes, right? Now, there's schemes. There's reasons why. Brian Kelly and the defensive coordinator and, the, and LSU do things the way that they want to do, right? There's a reason why there's schemes and there's a reason why you have certain personnel for certain things. People were upset. Harold Perkins was not on the field the first two drives of the game. Uh, understandably, right? I was upset too. Now, I understand why they were doing it, right? Then they realized, okay, we need to get him on the field. So what they did was they started putting him as, and we talked about this before, I said, and he reminds me of like a Michael Parsons. Mm-hmm. So what did they do? Hey, let's put you on an end of the line of scrimmage, unless you just use your athleticism and go get them. I, and but I but I will I, I will say this. I think what they found out, what they were probably super 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 hesitant about in those situations is if we put them there and they just keep trying to ram it down our throat, we're at a disadvantage. And he held his own. Right. He and so own. now you got to figure out okay because they had to take B.J. Ojolari out of the game sometimes mm-hmm. to put him in there. Now you have to figure out a way how to get both of them on the field. Right. Now he is going to be in every, on the field every down. Relatively soon. Now, it's, it's hard because you're young and you're athletic and you're doing all these things and you're talented, but there's some scheme involved to it, right? There's a reason why when Patrick Queen was in our studio in April talking about what took him so long to kind of get going is, one, the older guys start above him because they understood the scheme. It had nothing to do with athleticism. It had nothing to do with talent. It had everything to do with understanding what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to be, and when I'm supposed to do it, right? And so... Part of the reason why Harold Perkins is on the field every down right now is because He's there's some scheme old. involved, and they don't want to take away his athleticism by making him think too much too early, right? Now, they got creative, got him on the field. Matt House is... Our house in the middle of... He's done an He's outstanding done an unbelievable job. job. Like, <laughs> to start the year, listen to straight me. up. We, they we, had, you can throw the one Tennessee game out the yeah. window. He's done an outstanding job to start. His adjustments are unbelievable. The way he makes the adjustments on the fly, right? They had those first two drives. After those first two drives, they didn't score another touchdown. 
They scored three points after that. Okay. I'm with you. Love Matt House. Love LSU. Love what's happening. We can't keep getting down. No, no, no. <laughs> you can't keep doing it. No, no. I mean, we've said that a while. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Yeah. Now listen. But, but, but to say, and and I guess you're right because the, the I guess the biggest game of you know after a bye week is coming up, right? Uh, who are they playing? But I I do you know who they're playing that other team. <laughs> I I will say this though. I we talked about this. I don't know. Maybe week three. Maybe week four of the season when you started kind of looking around the league and seeing. The Kentuckys play different teams. Seeing the Ole Misses play different teams, you'd be like, which one of those teams scares you? Honestly, none of them. Besides Alabama, just because you know who they are and what they do. I hope I'm saying this. Not I hope they're not saying this in the building. Besides Alabama, because you know who they are and what they do. Which one of those teams was like, shit, man? I don't know if we could play with them. And obviously we could, you know. But you don't want to keep being down seventeen nothing. It's just not. No, it's listen, very, very hard to overcome that. Here's over the deal. And over it's like the game doesn't start until yeah. they get down seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here's, now we're ready. Here's a progression. That's it. Yeah. Caesars is the, so goddamn lucky that there was no service in that uh, Death Valley. First game of the season, we didn't get going until the third quarter. Right. This one, we took them one quarter. Okay. So maybe, maybe <laughs> Alabama weekend. Get better. Maybe Alabama weekend will take one drive. Maybe it's no drives. Maybe we start from the maybe kickoff. We maybe we start from the kickoff and we have no, we don't worry about it. And we get a kick and receive. You have to do that. Al- Alabama is too well coached. I'm not taking anything away from Lane Kiffin. Ole Miss is very well coached. Lane Kiffin is a very good coach. Same with Tennessee. Same with all these other schools, right? But nobody's Nick Saban. And. If you get down that to Nick Saban, it is going to be extremely tough because you saw what they did in Mississippi State last week. Mississippi State did not score until the last drive of the game. Yeah. Shut them out. It's tough offense to shut out. Um, but I'm with you. You cannot get behind. You, the reason, why, And another reason behind. why you can't get behind like when you play Alabama like that too as, as an LSU team is because they understand what that game means year in and year out. So you not you're not gonna sneak up on them. Like they're going to show up ready to play. They're going to give you what they got. So like you can't get down against a team that's that disciplined that knows this game means means that much. And it means that much to them too, every year. So like this that's this is this is for sure a game that it just can't happen. Can't happen. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Can't um, have it. Can't win with it. No, but when you talk about the positives of what you saw from LSU, obviously we got the Bronx cheer for the punt. I don't know where Jack Besh health is. You saw John Emery go I out. I talked to him. He was his back still banged up. He said he's he's hoping. He said, "We know Jack. He's like I'm gonna be ready for Alabama. I'm he hoping he's play, right. He wanted to play Saturday. Yeah, I'm hoping he's right. Um, so obviously it was not a phantom injury. Like people were trying to say, people that I talked to, I like oh, like he just you know. Yeah, Jack's afraid of the moment. Listen, bro. He fumbled a punt or fumbled, fumbled a kickoff and then fumbled a punt. Like I'm sure he was very upset about it. <laughs> Have a conversation with Jack. I can promise you that he didn't take his pads off and quit that day. Hey, and just fake an injury. All you got to do is that. have a conversation with Jack. You yeah. you find out real quick. He's probably not very afraid of much. No, no. So, very, very, very easy to see. Uh, I'd like to have him back. I love the way we are now using... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, go. I'm love, just trying to tee y'all up. I love the way that we are using our tight ends now. I love the way that the run game has... Progressed. Me too. Oh my god. Hey, hey, one of my favorite plays of the game of the day. The shotgun toss. Numbers. To Armani, Armani. Goodwill. That was one of my favorite ones, right? Because I saw I you see you see because where where I was sitting, you could see yeah the overhead view of of where of what was going oh, where on. You, right? where you my sitting? favorite one, I'll tell you, they ran it a few times. My favorite one that they've started at it in that they've schemed up well is the motion across. We're gonna snap it. Fake it, read the end. If I pull this and you stay on me, I'm dumping it to him in the flat. Like I'm running out there and I'm dumping it to him. In a, I I'm love about a touchdown it. to uh, yeah, Mason we, Taylor. We, if I said we ran it, they ran it like three times yeah, in that they, game. That's, Maybe that's, even more. But it's it is 100 opening the game back up for Brandon because now they can't. I'm sorry, not Brandon, Jaden. Now they can't just hey ball and stomach. I'm just gonna crash down hard and just kill this whole thing. Right, right. So, but but. And the only reason I say that was because of the creativity, right? You, you started to get – football is all about leverage and scheme. What are you looking at? What are you, I just heard a little vibrate. So I don't uh, know what's going on. Football is all about leverage and scheme, right? If you can out-leverage you your opponent, you can, get the, there. you can get the advantage. You are going to – The worst. The worst over there. So that's him. That's his – Without a doubt, he's been on I had it on the – No, I had it on the uh, the headphones. I was like, oh, that's who's here, my phone. Um <laughs> 
What was I saying? What I was going to say is LSU, you're talking about that little run fake that they yeah. do with the tight end leaking out, and they also ran 14 personnel where they had four tight ends on the field. So don't tell me. We didn't have enough tight ends? We got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's why I thought Stewart was going to be able to come in today. They got time. He had a good catch. He, he got did. called back. He had a big catch. He got called back. But the, like, the but creativity. Go ahead. Go ahead. The, yeah, yeah. They're, but LSU has, like, Denbrock has evolved with this offense, and to see them clicking the way that they are, they have, like, money plays now. I'm they just, have got to have it. It's weird. It's weird to me because I just don't understand like with the way it's progressed and how it's what it's turned into what you've seen over the last Why two. Was be- it so bad. Well, were well, we no, just? It's not, it's not because of the talent. No, no. Yeah. Well, I was about to say, were we just not? Were 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 the group of guys just not able to grasp that much of the information that early? So you had to give it to them like in baby, ba- like baby steps, or what? Or did we finally figure out like, all right, we need more than this. We need to actually add this stuff yeah, in too. And it's also, I, don't know, I don't know which one it was, but like, you know, just, it's, and it's also, on the same page now. Yeah, yeah. It also has to fall a little bit on Jaden Daniels, right? Not because he wasn't playing bad, but because this guy is coming to an offensive scheme that he wasn't familiar with, right? He's around guys that he's not familiar with. So, like, that shit takes a little time to get used to and to get comfortable. And once you feel comfortable with it, you start making throws and you don't, you don't hold it near as long, right? And you can start seeing him start to get comfortable with it, especially. Uh, against Florida, and then last week you could see, okay, now listen, there's a couple times where he missed a couple reads, but it wasn't like it was in the beginning of the year where no, he was just holding the ball. Listen, I'm sitting there, and I'm watching this guy, and I'm looking at everybody getting open, right, or running routes. There was one play where he's holding the ball, and he's holding the ball, he's looking, he's looking, and nobody's open. Everybody's yelling at him to throw the football. I'm like, where do you want him to throw the football to? Nobody's open. You know what happened? He waited, he went down, checked, Three, four. Oh, you know what? I'm going to dump it off to Josh Williams and get 12 yards. Hey, nobody was open. He did what he's supposed to do. 12 yard first down. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Okay, so shut the fuck up. Thank you. You know, you know what I mean? You know what, you know what play I love watching him? The oh. touchdown to, I think it was Jure early in the. In the Wander throwing ball? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that was, tell you, uh, that was and let me Brian tell you, Thomas, right? Brian, it was Brian Thomas, There's, you're right. But what happened to both? Brian but, Thomas got the P.I. But let me, Jenkins got the touchdown. But let me tell you why I loved it. It's because you sat there, you watched him stay in there, stay in there. You saw him see the mismatch and what it was and what it shouldn't have been. And he just said, man, to hell with it. I'm yep. throwing it. Uh, I like I'm, to see a little I mean, they're going to get a flag. Oh, no, no. I like to see a lot. No, no, no. The, but the spiral came out like that because I knew he felt like – I think he felt well, like he I'm not going to get it there exactly. unless, I, if, unless I literally try to absolutely exactly. choke it and throw exactly. it. But my point to it is is that that's a, that's a person playing with confidence yes. because you don't let go of that yes. ball in those situations if you ain't playing with confidence because it was late as hell yeah. on the read. The read yeah. – he came back to that really, really late, and he said, ah, he's down there. Here you go. Yeah. He's open. I'm going to make a play. There you go. And sometimes the best ball is an underthrown ball because yeah. they can't. The defenders have no idea where it's at, right? Yeah. So like, you also see him go through the progress. You also see him hit the crossers now. You also see him hit the guy in the middle of the zone. Like you are seeing the progression and you're hearing it from Brian Kelly and you're seeing the results from the receivers are all getting involved and they're all happy and it's just it is nice to see and it's something that I I'm not saying I told you so because I'm not but it's something that I want. Everybody says, oh, get him out of there, do this. Do that. I'm like, listen to me. This kid's making has made winning plays. He may not be consistent right now, but he has made winning plays and kept you in some games. Now, there are some times where he was inconsistent and he missed some reads. Yeah. But let now if game six, game seven, he's still doing the same things. We have the, you have some thing, right. The thing about it is for me, and I guess the, you know, the time is told. We've talked about it early in the season. I for one, it's really hard for me to get off and get away from a quarterback who just ain't giving it up to the other team. Right. Right? And it's almost like he was so good at not doing this early that his coach even himself called for him, man, I don't even care if you Do throw it. that thing away. Like, give it like give it up. Take the shot. Give a 50-50 ball up there. Let's see if we win it. And so if you can put that with a kid who's going to sit there and be coachable, and as you can say, it's pretty easy to sit here and say, what you saw in Florida State is not what you've seen in the last two games, right? If you so, play Florida State now, you're probably beating about three touchdowns. But yeah, exactly. But my point is, is for him to be able to have the trade of not just turning it over and giving it up and not valuing the football, and then now being able to be coachable and get to get himself to this point, that, that's impressive. It, it's impressive. And I think that's what uh, you talked about: how LSU fans are reacting live in the stadium when you can hear it whenever it's a drop back pass, and they're like, oh, you can hear the grumbles. Right now, they're getting to the point where. They're trusting Jane Daniels, and Jane Daniels is trusting his wide receiver. It's all coming yes. full circle. We, the we forget. Us. Okay, I, give him a second. I, 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 listen, I use this analogy only in the sense of how relevant and how recent it is. 
and because I and I use this analogy because of the heights that he reached here and, and how well he played here. But Joe didn't come onto the scene guns a blazing here. He Joe didn't not. tear it up. What you saw second year Joe here was not what you saw first you year. And to, I'm not even saying he was bad. No, because you he started wasn't. to see it towards the last part of that year. Because he, started, he wasn't. But my exactly. point is, is that wasn't the guy that showed up the first week. And my point is, is like, well, what's the difference? It's actually a little bit less. That kid came here in what the spring, maybe? Last yeah. year? Got here in the spring and here you go. Like it's it's it the shit takes time, yeah. man. <laughs> it yeah. just it takes time. It ain't that easy. It's just it's not it's it's just not you can't it's not a plug and play type of thing. You have to have build the chemistry that means that means and I know what? Everybody's worried about our offensive line. Our offensive line has become maybe a strength of the team. We rushed for two hundred and fifty two yards and threw for about two hundred and fifty. Like we are a balanced they're a balanced offensive team now, right? They can run the ball. It's not just Jaden Daniels, the running backs are getting runs, the running backs are getting first downs. Offensive line starting to push people around. You're starting to see a little bit of the swag, and you're starting to see a little bit of the confidence just carry over to everybody, and that goes a really long way. I think people outside of the program, outside of being the fans of LSU, are starting to see, oh, man, these guys, like, they're starting to kind of figure this thing out a little bit. Scary. And it's, yeah, they are, they're going to be an issue for people. It's, I don't know, man, it's just funny, man, because it's, it's what, it's, when it when it's not good and, and the product doesn't actually meet what you actually thought it was gonna meet, it's very easy to hop off and think that this place isn't what it is. It has been a machine since what, two thousand two, two thousand three? The Jimmys and the Joes are here. Yeah. Right? And it, now it's now it's all about if it's put together and they're all doing it right. The Jimmys and the Joes are here. It's giving me a seizure. Oh god. <laughs> well, that's not what it looks like on the show. Okay, as good. long as those oh, are okay, on the stream, I'm good. Oh good, okay. Oh, good. Good. But the, like the Jimmy's and the Joe's are here, right? And so like well, when you coach it up, right? And it's going like this is what you're going to get more and more of this. No doubt. And I'll tell you this. What I like, um, where is it? That's giving me, that's distracting. I know, yes, <laughs> but we have like to a, have it for it's like, I know, I know. It's like, a, call. it's like a strobe light. Can we but, get uh, this one going too then? Yeah, so, let's um, get them all going. Just, just, just for reassurance. <laughs> I'm watching. That's not what's really going on. I'm watching the game, right? Like, earlier in the season, you are like, oh, how come we can't get Kayshawn open? We can't do this. You know what I noticed? Kayshawn's playing a lot more slot, right? They're moving him around. They The first touchdown that he kind of misjudged in the end zone, mm -hmm. thought it should have been maybe out there him a little bit, maybe, but it, he, he didn't get enough air on it. But but I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm sitting next to uh, my buddy Kyle, and I'm like, I see the formation. I see where they're at. I'm like, oh, Kayshawn's getting this ball. Like, it's going to be a kind of a rub route. Kayshawn, it's the perfect goal line play. Everyone yeah. does it. Ran it, executed it, threw it well, just a little overthrown. But my point is they're putting him in a situation like, hey, this is for you. We are going to scheme you open and go make a play. And that's what they do. And that's what I like to see, yeah. right? Like, you like to see – Get the guys involved. You like to see them get the running backs involved. You like to see them get the short yards. And I also like to see, like, earlier in the season, Jaden Daniels, his yards that he was, like, his rushing yards were all scrambles. Now he's part of the running game, right? Now it's, hey, these are designed runs. When you have a guy like him who is, by the way, probably one of the most electric runners in all of college football. I was about to say, I think Nobody tackles him first I was about to say, time. I think it's very – like, they talk about how good he is as a, as a, how good he is as a runner. I still think it's very underrated. Like, uh, no doubt. I think he's a little bit better than what people are even giving him credit for Look, right now. He had a few plays where he was running, and he the guy was in the backfield, makes this guy miss somehow, like gets out of the way, three yards, two yards. That's a six-yard difference between hey. losing three in the backfield and gaining three. Like, There's, that's a big thing. It, it, it's not – and it's not really flashy either. It's just a very, very slippery – For sure. Like, he just misses tackles. For sure. But I, I think that adding – the added addition of, like, okay, now you're so confident in your passing game and yeah. they have to respect you throwing the football. Now we could put you in the running game with design runs and it's, it's yeah. more effective because now they're not just keying on you to do that, right? So – Look, offense has been progressing all year. Defense has been pretty good early. Struggled for a little bit. The last couple games, you know, outside of the big plays they gave up before, I think they played pretty decent as far as the run game goes. This week, started off slow and then ended up, you know, obviously played very well towards the end of the game. Second half, the entire second yeah, half. Yeah, the entire second half. So, 
Um, we're going to get more into that, into the conversation with that. Brody Miller is in the waiting room. So we are going he's to take on deck. on deck. He's on deck. He's on the circle, in the circle. And, and the on deck circle. On, yeah. No, what's the other one? In the hole. No, he's not in the hole. He's next up. I know. I just, I just love all the, I just okay. always love the nomenclature. Uh, all right. We're going to take a 30 second, <laughs> 30 second break. You're watching Mike Up, brought to you by Sterling Automotive. We'll be back uh, in a few. Today's show is brought to you by Dos Equis. Here in Louisiana, we like to have a great time. If you're looking to be the life of the tailgate, check out Dos Equis mini kegs. Hold 16 beers, easy to tap, yeah. easy to pour, easy to chill. Check it out, become a life of the party. You're welcome. I don't know, an LSU beat writer? I don't know. It's not, it, there is no official, let's put it that way. Perfect, yep, thank you. <laughs> I'm hanging on by a thread. Welcome back to Miked Up. We're brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Uh, I am excited. Oh, we got a little, little bump in there. A little bump in there. It's okay. Brody in. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I'm excited to introduce uh, our friend, Brody Miller, <laughs> <laughs> beat writer, LSU beat writer for The Athletic. Um, he just wrote, if you haven't seen it and you haven't read it, he just wrote a great article on some of the things that we have been talking about from, the day, from day one. It's a process. It takes some time. Um, people don't like to hear that word, but he had a really good article in The Athletic about it. Uh, Brody, thanks for coming on and uh, sharing your insight with us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, man. How you guys doing? I'm oh, doing great. Doing nice great. little setup. Look, you're, you're a nice studio. You you're studious. A bookshelf. I see you have some bro. books. Uh, have I've you read, read like three of these books? I was I was have you read them all? You, have you read those everyone? or are they on the to-do list? I start list? at one and then I'm like, you know... That shows on TV, and I yeah. <laughs> have a bunch of leather-bound books. You got to get that thing away from the TV, Rich man. Rich mahogany. <laughs> Rich mahogany. Um, yeah. All right, let's talk about this because everybody around Baton Rouge is buzzing. Obviously, um, LSU fans aren't emotional at all, mm -hmm. and they're very logical sure. about some of their 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 takes and what they want to see. And um, you know, they wanted to see it early on in the season, right? It's going to take time. If, if you've played any type of sport in the entire in, in any part of your life, you understand that. You know, a new team takes some time to gel. New coaching staff takes some time to gel. Talk a little bit about what you've seen and what you've heard around the locker room and around the coaching staff. Is how has they how have they gotten to this point uh, in the season? Yeah, I, I think so much of the first eight months of them in the building, right? We just kept hearing about process, 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 and and you've been a part of programs doing that process, and and it gets eye rolls, but it's kind of real and this was always going to take a little while, right? Like just the, the situation of Jean left this wasn't a disaster, but it was going to take a bit to be back to really competing for things. There's great talent at the top, but that second team, you know, or the, the depth is just not there right now. So, you know, even after that Tennessee game, Kelly kept saying, guys, like, this is kind of where we're at in the process, specifically with Jaden Daniels. And I think the thing you have to give credit for, like, yeah, this team's not perfect. They still might lose to Arkansas and AM. Like, who knows? Like they're but the thing, if you're a fan, you have to end this year regardless excited about is that you are six and two right now and you have a team that is getting better each week. And that is, again, a corny phrase, but it's not that common in college football. How often like, do you say this is a problem and it doesn't actually get fixed? And most problems, week one, offensive line's a disaster. 
it's a borderline strength now when it's when it's healthy. Quarterback was not a, as bad as people made it, but was right. not a strength. And now the last two weeks, they are clicking in a way where like Jane Daniels on his best nights makes this a top 15, top 10 team. So they're improving. The guys, I mean, Josh Williams had some really good stuff Saturday night talking about how like everyone kind of realized they bought in at the end of camp. It was like they saw the difference in camp and they're like, wait, this is actually different if you trust this stuff. So, yeah, they're not perfect, but I do think they're headed in the right direction. And I, I mean, I, like, I'm speaking from, from my perspective. I was like, I wouldn't want yeah. them to be perfect right now, right? Like I want to see the fact that they have the ability to keep going and keep going and keep going. And what I noticed begin, beginning of the season was as sloppy, as inconsistent as some of the things were, they still made winning plays in situations where they needed to make winning plays, right? So those are things that, like, if you didn't buy into a culture or you buy into a new scheme, that that's hard to do, right? You don't make winning plays if you don't buy into what's going on, right? And so you start seeing those winning plays happen more often. You see Jane Daniels develop, and I think that's what everybody was excited for uh, when Brian Kelly got here. Like he's been good at developing quarterbacks and great with the offensive line, and you see both of them start to gel and start to mesh, right? Is that something, some of the things that you've been hearing and seeing uh, in the locker room? Absolutely. I mean, and you bring up a great point about like the winning plays stuff. I mean, I think the Auburn game is the best example. They did not play a good football game at all. That was, I mean, I think the post game win expectancy on ESPN stuff was 11%, like that's bad. But that fourth quarter was defined by your exact point just your best players making plays, you know, Jay Ward forcing that scoop and score, or was it Ojalari and Ward, I forget, but, and, you know, uh, Greg Brooks stripping Coy Moore for that interception to win the game. John Emery came up big on some plays. It was just the best players just stepping up when you needed them to, even though this wasn't a great performance. And I think you're right. Like the things that were promised are slowly happening. And there's going to be, I, I feel confident that at least one more time this year, there will be like anger at Brian Kelly. And, and that's probably going to happen. Fire that's him. built in. But what's that? I said fire him. <laughs> Which is my yes, exactly. Out. <laughs> yes. A lot. Uh, but, <laughs> so, uh, I do think there is just that, that sign of the buy-in in the locker room. There are signs of like, these guys are actually buying into what he's saying. And that's, again, I keep saying the stuff is eye roll worthy because it is, but it's real in terms of they weren't sure what they were getting day one when he walked in that door. He is different. He did things differently. Keishon Booty is the ultimate example. He, he wasn't showing up and he wasn't happy about it. And now those are the exact guys now being like, you got to highlight the defense before he walks out for the post, uh, post-game inter- interviews and all that. Like, those are now the leaders. And I think that's a sign that, again, he's not God. I'm not trying to make him out to be some superhero coach. But so far, he's doing all the things you want. And I love your point that, like, you don't want it to look perfect because you don't want it to look false and, like, fraudulent. You want it to look like a team that is grinding and kind of improving right now. So the truth of the matter is, is like, we would all love for it to be an undefeated year, game in and game out. You go in and you expect to win. You go win and you somehow pull off a win every time. It's not realistic. There's one goal standard yeah. place pretty much that's making that happen year in and year out, and that's a little bit different, right? Yeah. As you watch this team play – and sitting where they are today, which is not in a position to do what they want to do, they're literally sitting on top of the SEC West right now, right? A team that's sitting on top of the SEC West, four games left remaining in the the schedule. You know what the schedule is. Being two games down in in the standings right now with, with the schedule they have in front of them, how impressive is it to see that you're literally sitting there with the opportunity to realistically make this season everything you could have dreamed about from start to finish? I mean, if he actually pulls out what we're talking about here, yeah, at that point, it's like you're talking coach of the year and stuff. Like, that would be miraculous. But the fact that you're even in this position, to your point, is huge. And I think the thing I keep going back to is the Jaden Daniels part of it. And I want to see it at least one more time against, like, a better defense. (laughs) Sure, of course. Right. Yeah, well, not, not 11 touchdowns in two games, but show you, you've improved against Bama. But still, those two games, that changes the entire outlook of this team, where I think going into Florida, this was a team that can hang in there, but they're not very good. And all of a sudden, if that's the version of Jane Daniels you get two weeks in a row, this team can beat anyone. This team is a, like if you're asking me to just rank how good these teams are at this exact moment, it's like a top 10 team, if it's that version. I. It's unfair to expect it every week. It's unclear. You don't want to judge too hard after two weeks because there still are the other six weeks he didn't play as well. But 
that is huge to your point because that does show the improvement. That does show that they can work with a quarterback. And man, Brian Kelly's players didn't love him at Notre Dame. That much I feel confident saying. But you can point to every person. They will say he got the most out of quarterbacks who honestly weren't that big of recruits, weren't that talented, right. but they got better. They, he, he was hard on them. They couldn't stand him at times, but they got better. And Jane Daniels talked really interestingly Saturday night about, like, he coaches me super hard throughout the week. But I want that. I welcome that. And that's why he is where he is. So, yeah, it is wild that they're in this position. You spoke about Kayshawn talking about, hey, let's highlight the defense before you go out, before you do anything yeah. else right now. Obviously, the slow starts – both offensively and defensively, like that can't continue. Like if you get down 17-3 against Alabama, that makes your life almost impossible in that game, right? But the adjustments that my house has made throughout the course of the games, outside of the Tennessee game, right, that was the one anomaly kind of where we didn't make that adjustment or we just couldn't make the adjustment for one reason or another. Everything that they've done or he's done adjustment-wise has been has, has, has hit, right? He's landed. Like the defense has played significantly better in the second halves of games. Um, what is what is LSU doing, or what the, what's the coaching staff doing to try to limit those slow starts and say, okay, we do make these adjustments, we have the abilities, let's do this from the jump instead of waiting till second, third quarter, till they're down seventeen. Yeah, it's such. Yeah, again, <laughs> I've, uh, I've Lloyd's heard me have this theory before. My theory is that he's implementing real life betting spreads in games. <laughs> <laughs> Brody, yeah, when I'll, I I'll, when, I'll Brody, when I tell you that the the Wi-Fi did not work in Tiger Stadium. I was frantically on our good partner Caesar's app, and I was just sitting there. I was like, "We're down 17. This is the time. This is the time." And they wouldn't let me Plus in. 17, baby. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm trying to live bet them. They wouldn't let me in. Exactly. Um, yeah, I. Wow, I just lost track. We're joking about that, but oh yeah, the, the starts. Yeah, it's such a good question, but I don't know the answer. Right. It's strange in terms of offensively. To give them credit, with the last two weeks they've actually started well offensively. Because right. I know they only started with three points the first two drives, but they did still make it within the 30 both right, those right, drives, right. right? They were moving, right. but it's still a key point. Like the fact that they have given up, I'm pretty sure Florida game two is two opening touchdowns, right? So it's like yep. f four straight weeks of two opening touchdowns. That is a big problem. And I don't know what that's all about. You know, the Florida game, it's like tackling was really weak. That was clear. And, you know, tackling did get better the next week. I think this one, I liked what they were doing strategically, uh, like make Dart beat you, but it was a bit of a weird middle ground of that, of like you're making Dart beat you, but by kind of stopping the run, yeah. but they were playing super soft, right? right? And I, I liked the thought process, and I think that was what Kelly was alluding to post game of like, maybe that's, I think, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he said, we have a weakness that maybe isn't that much of a weakness. And I believe he's referring to the cornerbacks, right? I think that's fair to assume. And when they got a little more aggressive with it, put more kind of on them, they shut them down. Yeah. So I don't know the answer to your question of like how you stop starting like that, because that's uh, that's above my pay grade. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's like, maybe the thing that you always were hoping to do, yeah. just do, you know, don't, don't be conservative early. I guess that's the closest answer I can come up with. Uh, you heard Brian. I mean, you heard Lane Kiffin talk about, hey, what changed? Well, Forty changed, right? Forty was on the field. They yeah. put him on the field more. He didn't play the first two drives of the game. Now, listen, I was talking before the show in my intros. I understand that they're schemes, right? I understand why he wasn't in the game, right? Because you had a game plan, you had personnel, and he didn't match up. And he said, okay, you know what? We need to get more pressure. We're going to put him in. But by doing that, they had to take B.J. Ojalary out. How do you think they can get creative to get both of them on the field at the same time to be able to do that? Because if you have both of those guys on the field getting after the passer, that's a, it's a pretty dangerous combination. It's dangerous. Dangerous, yeah, by the way, you dangerous. know the worst thing for my entire job is is when every fan is calling for something and I'm like, calm down, calm down. And then they end up being completely right. right. I'm like, damn, now there's no <laughs> yeah, right. right. but, I'm not doing a mailbag this week. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, punish them, yeah. Uh, but, no, I think there's a lot of ways, right? I think in a lot, Ole Miss was going to be tough to do that because it's, I think, against certain teams. You know, Ole, Maybe even Alabama, I'm not sure. Maybe you can do it. I'm never going to pretend I'm really the football guru expert. Right. Cotton. But, like, maybe you can do some – first off, I think personnel-wise, you can probably just play your normal three-man front and have both Perkins and Ojalari in the field. I think you can do that against – definitely against Arkansas and definitely against a and just the personnel they line up. But maybe even when those teams spread out a bit more, maybe you can go a two-man front. And yeah. maybe you just put, you know, uh, Guillory and Roy in there or something like yeah. that, or Wingo and Roy, and, and, you know, then you just have them on the edge. 
I understand why that might not have made sense against Ole Miss because stopping the run is so key. You probably don't want to lose those big bodies. But I think going forward, you should be able to get both on the field just by default. But, yeah, man, I get why it's a hard situation. You, you brought it up. It's like it's not easy to be like, yeah, I'm just going to bench. I think it's fair to say with Smith out, like Ojolari is LSU's best player. It's hard to be like, yeah, let's, let's take right, him out right. two out of three downs. It's hard. And, and, and it's also like as much as everyone's like, you got to get him on the field. He's not ready to play inside linebacker. Right. He will be, I'm right. sure. I'm sure he's going to be a superstar. Right. He's just not. So, yeah, I think they can going forward, but it is tough. And I, I, just to add to that, I think what ended up happening, too, in that game, if you revert back to the Tennessee game, is I think they got put in a situation yeah. where they saw, hey, this is what they do when they do these things. We're going to take them off the field in this. And I think Tennessee saw it yeah. as a – we're going to do this until you keep him on the field. Yeah. And he wasn't prepared to do that. And I yeah. think I think Brian, you know, kind of figured out after like, okay, we got beat coaching wise right there because they saw that we weren't going to keep him on right there and they just said, Hey, we'll just keep doing it. And that's kind of you No, know, I think that's a good point. Because that Monday it, Kelly immediately said, like, yeah, man, he should have been on the field. Right. And and so I think <laughs> I think from then on they started figuring out, hey, if teams are gonna do this, we can no longer do that anymore. Like he's we're gonna have to find yeah. a way to work him in. I think and that's, that, but that's yeah. the next progression is right, now right. we can't take BJ off too. They're going to have to find, we're going to have to find a way to keep them all together. And I think one of the most refreshing things that I've noticed this year is over the course, really since Saban left, right? You listen to Les Miles, you listen to Coach O, and they talk about all this stuff after the game. And it doesn't really make much sense and you don't really know where they're going. It didn't seem like they had a formulated plan and they stuck with the plan. Listen, if you tell me that you were going to do something this is the way we, we, we planned it up all game and you, you, try to ex- you just didn't execute that plan, I can accept that. But if you go there and you tell me something and then you say something else and you say something else and you don't really have a clear message, I don't understand that. What I've noticed yeah. is Brian Kelly gets up on the stand and he says, this is why we did it. This is the game plan we had going in. Yeah. I, I may not have, it may not have been the right move for me, right, Tennessee. We need to go back and we need to reevaluate and we got to take what we did good and fix what we did bad. And you see it change the next week, right? To me, that's like the yeah. most refreshing thing that I've seen throughout the course of this year. No, I couldn't agree more. It's been really refreshing just to cover, honestly. It's like he, and maybe some of this is like year one, like got to get the media on your side kind of stuff. Like that's possible. Maybe right. like a year or two, we'll just be like, <laughs> who knows? But, but right now, yeah, he is clearly trying to like, help us and everyone understand what's actually going on so we're not ignorant and like criticizing for like like there were plenty of times where i would be like torching daniels and then like someone would reach out to me being like here's the thing like these two guys missed their assignment stuff and we're wrong a lot in our analysis so it's like it is helpful one that he just kind of informs us but two to your point like there is an accountability on his end i mean shoot even just like in small joking things i remember what his first practice one with Walker Howard, his first post-practice press conference, he immediately brought out, like, making fun of himself that they basically were having him, like, do a snap. He had a broken thumb, right? And he was, like, doing calls with his hands, and they realized, like, oh, wow, I'm hurting his hand. We're idiots. And, like, that's just, a, <laughs> again, that's a joking example, but, like, that's yeah, but, a small example right. of just he gets when he's wrong, and he doesn't mind being wrong. It doesn't seem like. Cause it it's seems like, like the that. Goal. Hey, process. The goal is to get, you know, to a certain point. That's kind of endearing to the fans and the media, too, right? Like, it's, yeah. It kind of it kind of goes against the persona of Brian Kelly coming in. Exactly. No, I think you're right. I think I I thought going in, and again, he might get back there. I don't know. But my impression of Brian Kelly coming in was that he was this. I know better than you. You know, as a fellow Northeasterner, I can say this smug Northeastern guy. <laughs> and he hasn't. I mean, yeah, he's a little like standoffish in the sense that he's not going to be your best buddy. Sure. But he's not that he's actually like, I exa- I genuinely understand why you're asking that. Here's why that's going on. There's so many times he will, will ask a, a question and it seems antagonistic, but he's like, no, I'm with you actually. And, and I think you're right. That does gain support in the fan base and all that, because one fans want to know what's going on. And two, they don't want another Jimbo right now who Jimbo thinks he knows better than everyone and won't change his scheme and all that. And I think that's, a real problem at times. And the last thing to add to that, how much of the end of the Ogeron era was really rooted in like, we'll get that fixed. They wouldn't, they wouldn't adjust. They wouldn't, yeah. you know, the Bo Pelini example is the best one of like, right. let's stick and press man. But yeah, they you didn't see those adjustments and you weren't seeing those adjustments every week. You mentioned um, a little bit, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to make any a mountain out of a molehill here, but you mentioned a little oh, no. bit about um, Walker Howard and what, you know, probably that's a lot, a lot of people are expecting for Dude, next Lord. year. I, I know, know. Here that's, you go. This is Lloyd's move right like, here. And I'm not in pretty notes. Um, 
Jane Daniels has another year of eligibility. Where do you think you, yeah. not only you stand, but LSU and the LSU fan base stands with another year of Jane Daniels if that's what it was to be? Because we talked about it last week a little bit, but now yes. here we are, and 11 touchdowns in two games. I don't know how where he is ranked in the NFL-wise and where did he get drafted, but it does feel like LSU fans want to press the fast forward button and get to Walker Howard, but look at what you're watching right now. Yes, so, and I think my answer will be somewhat similar to my answer last week, is kind of cop-out, but it will work itself out in the sense that if he keeps playing this well, he will be good enough to go pro. And and also, like, he's a fourth-year guy. If Even if it's, like, medium, his stock's not great, but there's a little, just because of the way he plays football, I don't think that's going to drastically change. I think you see this with, like, big men in the NBA sometimes, and shoot, I mean, Mike may be able to talk about it baseball. Like sometimes your stock isn't going to get drastically better, so you just want to go take your right. chances and go develop in the pros and all that. That happens. So I think that's a small part of it. Like I just always, when he came here, was told like he came to get ready and go pro. But and so to your point, if he keeps playing like this, he will absolutely probably be good enough to go pro. On the other hand, if he doesn't keep playing like this, it might not. If he's not good enough, it won't matter because then they would replace him. So it's like I kind of think that works itself out a little bit. But man, if he keeps playing like this just for the fun of it and wants to come back, I think <laughs> Brian Kelly's mind, Brian Kelly does not view things through like, I got to keep my five star happy or like, no. I want to think about no. the future. He's going to think the best guy is going to play. Right I think he would, I think he yeah. would very openly welcome a, a very heated quarterback situation next year. I think Absolutely. he would love that. Now, yeah. here's, here's a very um, outrageous. And maybe more of a fan, fanny kind of. Uh, I mean, you hear his voice. My take. least favorite. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is actually so. So, <laughs> Jaden Daniels has what one interception this year, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. He has eleven touchdowns over the last two games. If he has a similar type of game against Alabama, and beats Alabama, does Jaden Daniels get put in the Heisman conversation? Ooh, that is fun. Um, I think mean, because he gets like in the conversation. You know what I mean? Because like, like hard if, to catch up. I mean, yeah, I guess I guess Hen Hooker's like the the leader in the clubhouse. But like, you look at it, you're like, well, this they just beat two of the top ten teams in the country. You're you have a yeah. chance to win the West, and you're gonna put up some some pretty if gaudy put, gaudy numbers by the end of the year. So I mean, I'm not saying he's gonna win it, but like maybe get invited. Yeah. No, I think you're totally like if again, yeah, like if he does what we're talking about, yeah, I I don't see any way he wins the Heisman, but man, yeah, he could get an invite if he pulls off hypothetically what we're talking about, because then you can even do some revisionist history. Say this does happen and he keeps thriving, you can start doing revisionist history of like, man, he wasn't even actually as bad as you thought those early weeks. Like, hey, his yards were good, and like, you know, and I don't know if I completely agree with that, but you could do that. Yeah. And I am actually a believer he was kind of keeping it afloat more than people think. So, I yeah, looked, I mean, it's yeah, not yeah. like a great – do I think he's ever even second in the Heisman? No, but could he get an invite if he beats Bama? Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm by no like, means – I might not – no means am I saying he's gonna win. The I, right. I, I think I, if he, I think if he does it, I think if he I think if he does this two more times, I think the conversation of him being in the race is real. One yeah. more time, right. I think and, it's and how much of this stuff with narratives, right? It's right. all about narratives. Yeah. And like yeah. if you take LSU from mediocrity, not not literally single handedly, but your performance elevated right, it right. and just changed who they are. Yeah, man, it's all narratives. So and, 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 I, and I completely agree. And, I, and the only reason I'll say that, and the only reason why I feel like it'll be that is because they're what they're ranked what eighteenth and twentieth right now in the two mm-hmm. the two big polls, right? So. so if they were to if they were to hypothetically beat an Alabama team that's sixth maybe fifth or fourth, depending on what happens this next week, right? When they both when they're both off. They jump up to a top ten team. Now if they go and do it if he goes and does it again against another Arkansas team, which who knows where they where they'll be, but they're a decent enough team, I think it becomes real then because then you're talking about a borderline top five team. And then that, that narrative yeah. I think really becomes a thing there. It's gonna play for the SEC West. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Um special teams has been a topic of conversation. Uh, not controversial at all. Topic of conversation. <laughs> um, seemed like outside of the first play of the game, seemed like special teams <laughs> looked a little bit better this week. No yeah. muffs, no no coverage bust. Actually, some pretty decent returns in the return game. Yeah. Um, great fair catch. Great fair catch. Got a standing ovation <laughs> for the fair catch. Um, I did like genuinely laugh when that happened. I did too. I, I mean, I, but I think did you anticipate? I mean, I anticipated it. Like, man, if he catches this ball, he's gonna get he's gonna get a, a nice ovation 
Well, so, you were probably one of the people cheering. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> you could have heard Brody. When that I may walk. have said, I may have said, just don't put anybody back there too. So. <laughs> Scooter Hobbs was genuinely the whole second half. Like, man, this is getting close. Like, I don't think they should put anyone back there. Was, yeah. um, but I guess my, Give my, me another diet my, my my question to you is like, you know, has what is what is the move in the special? How do you, you know, progress special teams wise? Like, obviously, it's easy to blame the coaches and it's easy to blame the players. I think it's a combination of both. It's maybe not some buy in. Maybe you know something's not landing with the players. And uh, you know, Polian is Brian Kelly's guy. So, like, what's the what's the move going forward? Like, how do you how do you solidify? Because we've we've obviously seen how important special teams is to a team. Yeah, it's hard, right? I feel like that's like such an important question and a good one. It's one that like I just don't know the answer because I'll never pretend to be like you know on the edge there. They got to change the no. I don't know with special teams, but still, no. I I think that it, it is an area that does feel like coaching a bit more than some others because it is awareness it is so situational i remember hearing stories of greg mcmahon just like so many of the great special teams plays of those last five years were like mcmahon prepping them for some obscure situation that never would happen and it happens and, and i do believe that so it is better that there weren't the issues this week but some of it it's also hard because it's like dropping the, the punts isn't coaching and those are guys you trust to catch the ball like I trust Malik Neighbors and Jack Besh to catch the ball right. and they drop it. Like, I'm not going to dunk on Brian Pullman right, for exactly. that. And I'm not even really going to dunk on him that much for like a true freshman messing up on an extra point block. Like, a, you know, like it's just kind of messy. And if it becomes an issue next year, then it's like, all right, this is, you can't, you got to do something here. But if they can figure it out these last four games, I do think it should kind of quiet down. But yeah, man, I don't know the answer because it's yeah. just, it does feel, I think that is a buy in position. Yeah. This is uh, th I feel like this is something that should be said, and I'm going to say it because I don't think Makai Wingo is getting his flowers at all, and he has been Great in the call. absence of in the absence of Mason Smith, he blew up that game all Saturday, and he has been that guy. You heard about it all in camp. You see it happening, and still nobody really wants to talk about him. I understand the Harold Perkins love; he deserves it. But Makai Wingo has been the guy that's opened everything up on this defensive front. How impressive has he been to you and what Matt House has done on defense whenever they're, you know, just spotting you 17 at the beginning? Yeah, I mean, if you don't count Ojolari as a, as a lineman, I think it's fair to say Wingo's been the best defensive lineman. I mean, I remember, yeah, like you said, all camp, I kept like, you know, you'd ask staffers, like, who's the best of the transfers? Who looks the best? And a lot of them would pretty consistently say Wingo. And you're like, he's a backup. Like, how does that work? And he... He really does look like I think there's an argument like I'd say him and Greg Brooks maybe are the two best transfers. Mm, right. And he gives you something where he is giving you a pass rush and he's a good run stuffer. He kind of is this is gonna sound I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. It's the most he's kind of what I thought he's kind of what I thought Jaquil and Roy was gonna be when he was a freshman. And Roy's been amazing in different ways, so I'm not like saying that. But like that kind of three technique, like versatile guy who is both athletic enough to cause havoc and strong enough to really stuff the run. I mean, him and Ollie Gay were the key to that game, as much as like Daniels, all these yeah. things, Perkins, all of that's true. But that three man front blew up so many runs at the yeah. line, and a lot of it was Gay and Wingo just making solo tackles there and all that. So yeah, man, Wingo's the real deal. He still has three more years of eligibility. I mean, at least at least at LSU, one more year. I mean, that's it's a huge thing for this LSU D line to think like they still have Mason Smith, Wingo, Perkins. I, I know that's not even the question you're talking about, but so much of that defense could just be filthy next year if they make the right moves in the secondary. Um. I'm, I'm glad Lloyd kind of kicked it to the defensive side of the ball. I'm an offensive guy, like Can offense, obviously. It? Like, Yeah, but you should have played corner. Yeah. yeah, that's what they say. Uh, I'm an offensive guy anyway. Should've so we're baseball. sitting there watching this thing. I don't think people really understand how impressive it is to basically give up nothing the rest of the game after going down 17-3 and finishing that game on a 42-3 to run. In an age like today where offense – Offensive football is, is it's king. It happens. Everyone's got a good team, and points are put up at an absurd like rate right now. I don't think people are understand how impressive it is what they did, not just Saturday, but the week before, too, on, the, on that side of the ball and how dominant that side of the ball can be when they're playing well, especially when the offense is clicking like it was. Yeah, you're right. I mean, and the weird thing was going into Tennessee, we probably thought that was like one of the best defenses in the country. That Tennessee game got weird, but it's like hindsight. You can't, 
you're not going to dunk on a team for that because mm-hmm. that is the best offense in college football right now. And that's just a weird contextual game. You're down 13 nothing. And they were put in teams. very weird situations. That you're exactly. Not and they actually made stops that yeah, first yeah, half. Like it was yeah. only 20 to seven and a half, right? They were, they played well and eventually just the dam broke. And that yeah. is what it is. But the Florida game is just weird because in a lot of ways I'm with you. They played well. And I'm not going to like hold the 42 21 touchdowns against them like i'm not gonna really judge them by that yeah this defense is really good and matt house is uh, that was probably the one hire i think probably most of us right we're like that's probably the best hire they made frank wilson maybe but he's the real deal and i mean it's the adjustments we keep talking about that you brought up before it's the way that i mean that mississippi state game plan was beautiful where it was like it wasn't just the drop eight thing that everyone talks about it was conservative while attacking in the pass rush in super creative ways. And this defense is really finding itself where now Perkins is finally in his actual form of what you'd hope. And it's like, it feels endless. And the one concern is the corners and they're hanging in there, man. Like to Kelly's point, like they got more aggressive in that second half and Dak and Jackson, and some of it's just Jackson Dart isn't that great, but Dart wasn't able to beat them. Like uh, Mackay Garner's had a pretty nice year, but our Converse doesn't really make mistakes. And that D line is just, it's causing havoc. I mean, BJ Ojolari is, is it crazy to say the second best path, third, second or third best pass rusher in the country right yeah. now? And he's almost an afterthought. I like what this team can do. I mean, they have flaws. Tackling had like that two week stretch, which was a major issue. So right. you want to get that short up. But I don't hate them matching up against Bama. Like, am I picking them to win? I'm not. But I like them because oh, their Bama O line isn't that great. LSU's D line can win that battle. Bama's offense is great, and I'm scared of Bryce any day of the week. But the one thing that Bama's not able to do this year is take the top off you. They don't have those right. difference makers in the receiving game. That's great because that's LSU's weakness, arguably. So there's a lot of stuff that matches up that LSU can make this a ball game. I have no idea if you have the answer to this question, but do you know what happened to John Emery and what his prognosis is going into the Alabama game? No, I'm glad you asked. I mean, that's going to be one of our first questions, I think, Tuesday, right, tomorrow when we talk to Brian Kelly. Because the worst part about these post games is, like, you have, like, six minutes to ask him, like, kind of questions that are really for your game story. And you don't get asked, like, you got deadlines. what's going on with – Yeah, it's, well, it's just, like, <laughs> that's not the time to be, like, what's going on with this little injury? So I don't know. It was strange. I mean, some of it, it's possible he just, like – Goodwin was back and just they, they, those were the two guys they trusted. But it is strange because Emory had been finding his form a little bit. He was looking good. I don't really know what that was. And if you yeah. guys know, I'm all here. I, I, do not, <laughs> I do not know. I do not. We'll let you know when we find out. I'll keep my ear to the ground for you. Sometimes I'm like, sometimes with Jordy, I'm like, Jordy actually knows what's going on and I don't. And I'm like, he asks about it and I'm just like, how do I play this? Uh, Brody, dude, I, I appreciate you taking out the time and coming on the show today. One last question. You said you you kind of like the matchup against Alabama, right? Obviously, it's two weeks away. The team has the week off. The spread, me and Lloyd, mm-hmm. we I bet seven, LSU was plus 17 before the Ole Miss game. You got 17. It's down yeah. 16 and a half. Do you think that it's going to go down a few more points? And um, well, it's, actually, it's actually a pick em. If, to be honest, if you're betting on LSU, they give you 17 every time they play. Great that's point. A, that's a, that's a great point. point. <laughs> yeah. Terrific point. That's probably right. Why, Start probably, right at it, baby. That's probably why you're a great better. Yeah, thank you. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a, I, like, there's no way it goes below 14, but yeah, no, I think it will go down to that 14 and a half range yeah. because you're in this double zone of Bama's flaws are clear. Like, they're still, to me, a top three team. Like, I'm still scared to death of them. But yeah, like, they have their flaws. <laughs> LSU's finding its footing. Yeah, I, I, I love that 17, like 17 and a half. I really like that because it is in Tiger Stadium. And you do, again, like, Bama's going to get theirs. But I don't know if they're going to have the explosive plays to blow you open. Yeah. Right. And I think the fascinating part of that game is going to be, can LSU run the ball like they have this past right. week or two? Because, right. you know, Bama's front is great. Like, right. I, I mean, have fun with Will Anderson and yeah. all that. So, yeah, I, I I don't know if they'll be able to do that. And it'll be the best test for Jane Daniels because not just, like, bodies-wise is Bama good, but Nick Saban and Pete Golding are going to come up with – probably the most creative defensive plan you've seen yet to figure out what they do. So, yeah, I I, I like the 17 and a half, though, but I wouldn't go below, like, 16. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mikey, why don't you steal that playbook from your I'm going to work on it. Keep it in the family. Pete, Golding, huh? yeah. Pete, Golding, Pete Golding's uh, brother is my brother-in-law, so maybe I can get some inside oh, info. Maybe I, can get some in, maybe I can get some inside info and uh, 
and try to get yeah. some, some, just hand it over just to Brian Kelly. Go have dinner over there a couple times this week. I'll yeah, ask just for season tickets and just maybe some field passes every game, and I'll give you, I'll give it to you. Uh, What's the binder say? Yeah. Brody, I appreciate it, dude. Have uh, Enjoy the rest of your night. Enjoy Monday Night Football. Hopefully it's not a stinker. It looks like it's going to be a stinker. But yeah, uh, I yeah, need but, it to be a stinker. Uh, huh? yeah, hopefully we'll see. But uh, appreciate it, man. We'll have you back on. And uh, tune in tomorrow morning for uh, the Jordy Colada Show. you hear more from Brody. I'll appear I'd be on Wednesday. Thanks, guys. A lot of fun. Appreciate it. <laughs> see you, man. To you. To me? To you. To me? Throw me the ball then. Bow, bow, like? bow. Go high point it. Go over. I look like Brian Thomas. Hey, you like that? Brian Thomas has been balling out, man. Yeah. The receivers are hitting their stride. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Hey, you love you love to see a team really get hot in the second half of the year, man. Let's be honest about it. Like, or just what, the second hey, half. Hey, what, what I love to see you, like, you know, pull out a win against Florida, maybe pull out, maybe maybe play better against Tennessee. Yeah, obviously. Wait, but you they, love they, to they see. They did win against Florida. No, no, I'm Florida State. Florida State. And then get, you know, play better against Tennessee. Yeah, but like you love to see a team get hot during the second half of the year. No doubt. Love to see it. Love, 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 love. Love, love. Speaking of love. Oh, yeah. Speaking of love. Tell me about your weekend, man. Oh, man. Weekend, huh? Weekend. It was a week. What do you mean? It was a whole week. Yeah, a week. How does he come back still in shape after I saw every cocktail and every food? Bro, first off, let me tell you. You have 45 today? Yeah, I did. I, did. Yeah, I, I did. left early. They didn't get much effort out of me, but I was, but I was in there. That bad? No, I had no. I had ticket to Lafayette, and I didn't. I, it's just me this week, so I had to I had my had Kobe. My wife. There's a lot on town. this plate. A lot on this plate. My this wife week. is out of town. I had to go get Kobe. I had to make sure, and I just had had to just be in my ear. this week. <laughs> it's like a single dad. <laughs> I am a single dad right now. <laughs> single single dad. dad. Single dog dad. <laughs> yeah. Kobe uh, no, be hey, fine. Hey, we had a great week, man. Um, yeah, I didn't even. I do know that at the <laughs> resort, there is a fitness center. I mm. cannot tell you where it is or what it looks I'll like tell you inside. what I'm not going to be doing. Because, well, I, I know somebody's going to ask me, but, but, but because I didn't, I didn't even go, I didn't even sniff it. I'll tell you when I'm there. I didn't there, even go anywhere near I'll tell you where I'm not going to be is there. So, I yeah, I don't, I don't know, but I, did, I had a great time. I ate everything they put in front of me. I drank. Free trip, right? Everything. Outside the they, yeah, everything they How? put in front of me. Because they, they paid well, all the money to have their wedding there. Yeah, but they say, well, we, we, we uh, so that's the, that's the real, that's I thought the, you were scouting locales. No, you, they already no, got no, the locale. No, no, no. You're they're getting gonna recruited see, right now. No, no, they're going to see where their wedding's going to, how it's going to take place yeah, once yeah. there. Mm. So, Can't no, wait to be man, there. The trip was great. The food was awesome. Literally mm. every restaurant. I don't think I had one thing that was like... And if you know anything about me as an eater, like I'm a super picky eater. And they was putting shit in front of me. I'm like, bro, I ain't never heard of this before, but let's but I'm try gonna eat it. <laughs> and shit was smacking. Mm. <laughs> Three weeks? Smackin'. Three weeks, you got another trip. Yeah, we do. Uh, that's, a good hey, one. that's why I got to pop in F45. Get, get in there. there. I got to get, right get, get back right, too. I got to get back right. That took a whole like, nine got, days off, baby. Three weeks, you got another trip. Looking forward to it. Uh, I'm glad, I'll be there. glad you're back, though. Yeah, man. We held down the fort. Uh, it was me and Lloyd had me and Lloyd day. Like, it was. I, I actually went back and looked at the clip. Of me and in Cabo, like the, when I was on in Cabo, I'm like, damn, the background really looks does so look good. that good. It, was, it looks like it was fake. Didn't it? I was like, damn, this shit really does yeah. look good. So it was me and Lloyd. You helped us out that one day. Sean came in on Wednesday. Sean told another Tore great story. Up. By the way, I had, had to cut some parts. When Sean, when Sean gets, <laughs> when he comes in and tells his stories, and you see, like, it's almost at twenty thousand views on Twitter. And That's it's so like, funny. Sean loves it. That's so funny. I was getting ready to say, I kind of didn't want him to go viral. He loves it. I want him. To, I need him to come on. I need him to come on. We just gotta keep bringing him on until he flops with one, and he, they bring him back down. He's like, well, I'm running out. Of, I'm running out of stories. I'm like, you don't need to tell st- anything. You tell like it's just. He's a good it's storyteller. Just, yeah, it's just you. you. So he doesn't yeah, have to tell you. like our stories. He's just a good storyteller. It's just you. Um. But I'm glad you're back. Cocksucker. Yeah, Needed you to be back. <laughs> hey, Earls. Earls was uh was pretty solid. We had a little bit more energy in Earls yeah. this past weekend. I thought we were getting in in time and, and I, you know, realized, hey, what time's the flight? Oh, yeah, we yeah, we don't leave until five. What you mean? But, what you mean? What you mean? What you mean? But you know, uh, that's how it goes. Well, all right. We uh it's good to be back. It's nice to have the room. It's nice to uh talk sports. Uh Eileen is about to be here. Okay. Uh, she uh, she says she's gonna text me and when she got here so we can go get her. I'm gonna tell Lloyd to go get her. Hey, we, she doesn't know this, things. but we're throwing this ball to her too. Like when she when it's time for her to talk. Absolutely. <laughs> she was an athlete. She was an athlete. So let's see. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. But we're gonna Pumper talk Saints. Oh, I know uh, a lot of people are discouraged by the way the Saints have been performing this year, me included. Uh, but can we get Alvin Kamara in the end zone? That would be nice. As bad as they've been playing. 
still in it, baby. Still in it. Still right? in it, baby. Like the division isn't playing very well. Uh, Tom is uh, long going, season, baby. Tom is going through some Tom things. First time. Tom's Tom, just. I don't even think it's time. I think it's just it's something else. Prenup. It's a lot of different things. <laughs> Now, I don't want to speculate, but... Uh, <laughs> because Tom's still throwing the ball well. He's like... But, like... It doesn't seem like... It don't seem like that, that it's It's the there. first time that I've... How'd get watched, fucking divorced for this? It was, <laughs> it was the first time I've seen Tom Brady not have a team connected. You know what I mean? Like, not feel like they're all in sync. So, um, good thing for the Saints. That's happening. The Falcons are kind of... Uh, whatever. They've been they're better here than I think people thought, but... Yeah. Same in the, the division. They're probably Panthers. they're probably they're, they're probably one of those scary plays because if you get a good version of them, it's like right. where are we in for something we weren't trying to be in for, and then they'll you know they'll flop. And the Panthers must have really <laughs> hated Matt Rule because he gets canned and boy they played awesome. He gets canned and they go and beat Tom by three touchdowns. Awesome, <laughs> boy. I mean, if you're a gambling man, that was an all timer. This is the time if to you're, take the interim. I would coach. love to know who's killing NFL football gambling. I right can't, now. not me. There is no, like you have to be as uneducated about football as, as you could possibly be to like be good at NFL football right now. Yeah, this is when you start like let you let your dog pick the game. Oh, it's like, unbelievable. You just put two treats down and say, which one? Which one? Which, you which one do you want? Which boy you going to first? <laughs> oh, that's, that's what I'm we need the, we need the octopus back. Yeah. that picked all the soccer games. I know. Yeah. I, rest in peace. I believe. I don't that. even know who you're talking about. Oh, there's an octo- there was an octopus that I believe picked like the entire FIFA World Cup correctly. And then it, di- it died. Mm, too but much. It went out a winner. Went out a winner. Hopefully he took his picks. Not you, but... Was no, he in the horse know. racing? Or it wasn't... Yeah, I think it was just... I think it was just soccer. <laughs> he, was just a, he was just a World Cup guy? <laughs> yeah. Loved it. <laughs> couldn't get um, him for four more years. I just couldn't keep him there. Every four years. All right, wake him up. Was, Peter, don't get me. Please don't get me. <laughs> um, Calamari is fire. Fire. See, I don't like Calamari. What? You eat anything. No, I don't. I'm yeah, pretty picky. Do. I'm pretty picky. You're an anything eater. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty picky. My wife would disagree. <laughs> Maybe so. Yeah. I heard you skip the haunted house. Oh, I was a um, work trip. <laughs> yeah, Unfortunately. I had to go. Unfortunately, I had a work trip. I was ah, like, shucks. I was like, Let me know how it is. Yeah, you scared? <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, Eileen's here. We're going to take a uh, minute break. We're going to get her situated. Right address? I, th- I hope so. Twenty one forty eight. Door. <laughs> yeah. He gave Sean the wrong. Ad- he gave Sean the wrong address last week. Sean goes, "Well, I'm just not coming now." And he's like, "No, you're right here. You're literally you're literally two the doors street. down." Uh, all right, we're gonna get situated. We're gonna be back in a minute, minute and a half. Uh, you're watching Mike Up, brought to you by Sterling Automotive.
Welcome back to Mike Up. We're brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Uh, Lloyd said we're back, and then we weren't back. We're almost back. I didn't get the countdown. Usually, you don't give me. The, sometimes you don't give me the countdown, so I don't know. Uh, I'm proud to introduce our new friend, new friend of the show, Eileen Natchik. She is anchor for NBC 33 and Fox 44 covering New Orleans Saints. We talked a little bit about the Saints earlier uh, on the show, and a little bit before she showed up. And she's got more of the inside scoop than we do. So welcome to the studio. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Um, talk a little bit about you. Where, give me your background. Where are you from? How, what brought you to Louisiana? Because I know you're not from here. Mm-hmm. So. Which is, I hear sin around here. No, no, no. Look, we yeah. welcome everybody in Louisiana. Open arms. Okay. Everybody. Yeah, we you welcome. You call me friend. So I yeah, you're a friend. Feel yep. You're now a friend. Um, well, well, I feel, uh, is it, it okay if I say I'm from Tampa? It's okay. Tampa's fine. I love Tampa. What is, is it not Tampa? Is it right outside of Tampa? So it's north of Tampa. Where? It's 45 minutes north of oh, Tampa. Oh, you're it's doing Wiki- you're yeah. doing the thing where it's like I'm from New Orleans, but it's actually right. like I'm outside of New Orleans. Exactly. It's just easier to well, say no, this. No one knows what Wiki Wachi is. Wiki Wachi? Wiki Wachi? Yeah. Wiki Wachi? Wachi. Wiki Wachi. Like Wachi. Yeah. That's, oh. Is that like the name of the street you live on, or is that <laughs> <that's> the town? <laughs> Actually, the street's called Mississippi Run. Wow. It's wow. also kind of that interesting. Close, huh? I probably shouldn't say that. Uh, Mississippi Run on Wiki Wachi. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually. Well, mom, dad, I'm sorry. Uh. <laughs> I'm just my parents' house, so hey, you know, how about it? What's your social security uh, number? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, 45 minutes north of Tampa. Um, I, I didn't I didn't tell you this. I was basically uh, raised on a farm, pretty much. Yeah, wow. I was oh, like wow. uh, my grandparents. They they owned a farm like 20 minutes north of where I'm actually from. So uh, yeah, spent a lot of time there uh, with the American Quarter Horses and and Black Angus. That's and, awesome. And I, I know my my stuff there. I see that. That's good. Um, yeah. So from there, uh, went to college in East Carolina, and then moved to Virginia for work. Moved back to Florida for work and then moved here a year ago. And you're a collegiate so, athlete, right? Is that yeah, kind of what got you retired. into the sports world? Kind of. Sports, yeah. I based it, I mean, I, I grew up in sports. Uh, my dad played um, professionally and then my mom, she played softball in college and then my aunt played volleyball in college. My uncle played baseball in college. My other aunt played basketball in college. Very athletic. So oh, okay, yeah, Jesus. So, oh, yeah, it's, it was kind of, you know. About you never had a chance. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah right? Know. If I wanted to be like anything else, It'd absolutely be a not. Yeah. 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 I want to go to the moon. No, yeah. you got to play volleyball. Yeah, no, exactly. You've got to be a scientist. So, well, the way this family's set up. Yeah, you know, that's... The way my bank account set up is, yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to <laughs> yeah, so. get back out there and practice. And so this is your first year covering the Saints, It correct? is. It is. How have you liked it? I love it. This, to me, this this area, South Louisiana, Louisiana in general. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can say is, South Louisiana. South Louisiana, North Louisiana, the same state, is but different, yeah, a little yeah, different. Yeah. Is yeah, the most... <laughs> the most... Great people from North passionate Louisiana. Passionate fan base, passionate people I've ever, I think, exists. Like, way more than I, I think Philly First gets statement. y'all a run. Yeah, and that's true. That's true. I think Philly and, you know, Saban country give y'all a run. No, I will. But I think South Louisiana, Louisiana in general is so passionate. And it's really, really cool. I mean, you ask random person on the side of the street, what's Drew Brees' grandma's middle name? And they're like, oh, it's Clarice. No, like, they know everyone, you know <laughs> what I mean? Um, which has been really, really fun and challenging for me, too, like, as a journalist, right. too. You know, you got to make sure, like, you yeah. know your stuff. Um, but, it, yeah, it's been, it's been fun. It's been well, we're going to test you, see how much you know on your stuff. All right, right? let's go. <laughs> um, okay, so obviously you've adapted to South Louisiana. It's your first year covering the Saints. The Saints... Mm-hmm. I don't want to say historically because, you know, they've had their poor history before, but over the last 20 years right. or so, not almost 20, but 15 years, they've been one of the better yeah. franchises in, in the NFL. New coach, a lot of new guys. Everybody came here with some high expectations. A lot of people didn't really know what was going to happen, but yeah. high expectations. Hasn't gotten off to the start that they wanted to. Um, you cover them. You're kind of in the locker room. What's the vibe and the feeling in the locker room um, that you've kind of started to notice? Yeah, um, I think it kind of started with Carolina. Like the the vibe after that was like, all right, this is this is interesting. This is kind of confusing, right? And then um, the loss to the Bengals was like very very disappointing. Like I I almost felt like just as kind of disappointed as they were. Like they thought they were going to win. It, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, they, they expected to. They had that, that expectation. And um, in the locker room after, it was just like, 
it was very, very quiet, you know, you, you felt the tension of everyone. You felt everyone just be like, we, we should have won that game. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the car, the loss of Cardinals just like straight up embarrassing, mm. straight up embarrassing. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously you, you, you guys watch that game. Yep. Like it was, it well, was, I was not, I was actually at the Astros game. Mm. And I wasn't watching it, oh, and then right. I and then I looked at my I was, looked at my phone. We're up fourteen six. I looked at my phone. We're down twenty eight fourteen. I was like, Yeah, well, how does that happen? And then yeah. obviously the, yeah. I go back and I watch the highlights. I'm like, Well, that's how yeah. it happens. I see it two pick sixes, and <laughs> yeah. you know that's kind of what happens. A different version I, of the two minute drill. Yeah. <laughs> I think one one hundred percent the um, the interception that Dalton threw in traffic in the end zone that right before that that changed everything. Yeah. Yeah. That changed yeah. everything, um, and. If, for my opinion, my opinion, there was a lot of, oh, you know, why is um, Kyler talking to his coach like that? I mean, you, you saw them, like, mm-hmm. arguing on yeah. the sideline. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was, like, a big topic yeah. after the game. I was like, where is that with the Saints? Like, where is that fire? Because all season long, they've, they've been kind of like, we're not, we're not tripping. We're not, you know, we're not stressed out. Like, this is not panic mode yet. I think after that loss, they're now, like, so- this is – yeah. I'm, glad, well, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. I was wanting to know, like, is the field – because we haven't really seen mm-hmm. uh, this team healthy and play together mm-hmm. yet. Now, look, I get it. It's the NFL. Everybody's dealing with injuries. It's, how, it's, how, it's like the lay of the land, right? Mm-hmm. Is it a feeling in that, like, locker room that it's like, hey, look, once we get these guys back, we can start to make a run and we can start to, we can start to go? Is that what you feel like has been a lot of the not fire, not yeah. panic feeling is coming from? Yeah, well, Den- Dennis Allen has, has said a lot. Like it would be great to to have you know Jarvis back, Michael Thomas back. Right. Uh, they obviously just lost, lost Adam Troutman, um, Andrews P. I mean the list goes on, right? right. Um, I would be hope. <laughs> Jameis. Yeah, yeah, Jameis. Uh, Michael would... Thomas might be on the team. Um, you know, one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would be hopeful that you get Jarvis back. Um, you get Adam Troutman back. Not a too serious injury. Andrews P. Uh, the conversation about Jameis coming back. Uh, Will be had a little bit later in the week. They never, he never really likes to. Because was he dressed say. out last week? He 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 was no, dressed last week, but yeah. I, don't, I don't really yeah. know if he was active. I think he was like emergency program. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, but to answer your question, he has mentioned that like it'd be great to get everyone healthy. Right. But there's there's literally no excuse. Yeah. I I think that their um, number twos in terms of receivers are very talented. Yeah. I think they're very talented. Um, Dalton is a, a credible backup. Mm-hmm. I I think the problem has been the defense has always, you know, had had leaders, right? Yeah. Like, what is the offense's identity right now? We we don't know. Who if I asked you who's the leader on the offense right I now, would you tell me? Probably. You can't tell me. And I think that's been a really been the issue. Yeah. Um, and actually, for the first time after the Cardinals game, uh, Traquan Smith told Cat uh, Terrell. Uh, ESPN mm-hmm. reporter uh, after cameras went away and stuff he was like she, that was the first time Alvin Kamara gave a speech after the game so he gave he a speech after perfect. the game and was like this is not Saints football yeah we have lost our swagger what's going on and I don't I wasn't I wasn't there when that happened so I don't know how loud he yelled right. if he yelled at all or what you know exactly right. was said but he Traquan also said that that was the first time someone has stepped up in that manner to like hold everyone accountable and that was actually really surprising to me because i didn't know that and to me it then clicked i was like i feel like that i feel like that's probably like what it is because i think they're way too talented to be two and five right now they should should be five and And you go and you go through a year or really years having sean and drew there right Right. so you already knew who your leaders were right right and then every year you'd have one or two leaders well then you had cam jordan at the end, right? So then you had right. him plus one or two other people would come on the defense every year. Now, right now, it's him and Demario Davis. You know the leaders there. You knew the leaders were offensively, and that was going to be Drew, and that was going to be Sean Payton. So everybody was going to be on the same mm-hmm. same page. Everybody now they leave, kind of abruptly. Like you knew you knew uh, right. Drew was leaving, but like Sean, yeah, Sean was kind of like a it was a bombshell. Like nobody really expected yeah. that. Maybe maybe in the in the in the building they did, but yeah. no one else really did, right? So now. You're trying to figure out okay, who's going to take over this leadership role offensively. Who's going to bring everybody together? Yeah. And the fact that you said Alvin had that talk, mm-hmm. 
makes me feel a little bit better. Right. Now, what also makes me feel better is that the division stinks. <laughs> yeah. Right? Count your blessings. Yeah, because All right. <laughs> Literally New it. NFC least. <laughs> this is the yeah. N- it used to be the NFC, what were the Cowboys? Uh, NFC South? No, we're the South. We're the NFC. South. They're, the, they're the East. East. Yeah. Right. I feel like everyone besides the Eagles right now are just like right. not playing great football. Yeah. Exactly. So now that you you know that you can kind of get back into it, you're really only a game back, right? right. You have you're tied with the uh, Falcons. You're t- mm-hmm. no. We're in last it's, place. You're tied with the yeah in last place. <laughs> we're in last but you, place. you're two and five, but the other two teams are yeah. three and four. Right. We're I think the, the, I know best, <laughs> the best case scenario. I wrote this down because it can get confusing, right? Yeah. Is and tell me if y'all feel differently or have seen differently that. The best case scenario, the Saints win, right? Bucks lose, and the Falcons can beat the Panthers. Yeah, because we have the tiebreaker of the Falcons. Right, so that's like the best case scenario for it to happen at least right now. Yeah. But it's it's actually crazy that they could still be in it and and being two and five. Right. So, yeah. and good. Yeah. No, you. I mean, it's very disappointing because you saw last season and all the adversity that they face, external adversity. Demario Davis said in an interview today they have literally created their own adversity. Yeah. Like they have created this adversity. So I think the pan, I don't want to say panic mode, panic button. Um, is but, your hand on it? Oh, now it is. Yeah. It's not he, pressed. He said, it's just on it. it uh, I don't know. I might be pressed. He, he said today, he said today in an interview, he was like, where the ur- sense of urgency is, is now there. Like it's there. And the thing that I like about uh, this team is, they no one's like pointing fingers right like yeah. the defense is sitting there saying we need to play better yeah you know and it, i mean they do but like yeah. I, I would point at right. the offense needs to you know step yeah up. Be more we get Alvin now, yeah. in the end zone all these yeah, that too all the injuries obviously pile up right when do you expect or anticipate everybody being back or at least a lot of the guys come back because You've heard for a few weeks now, like, hey, well, Michael Thomas isn't that far off. Mm-hmm. And you've heard Jarvis Landry's making <clears> progress. <throat> you hear Jameis is like, hey, we're going to give him a few more weeks. When is when is when when can we expect to see, like, a full offensive lineup? Yeah, yeah. Back? That's a great question. A full offensive lineup. I don't think I'd expect that this week. Okay. Um, a full ex- – I would maybe say the week after – if not the week after that. But like I said earlier. If not that week. If not that <laughs> week. If not that week. Week, the week 17. Well, so, yeah. not that week. <laughs> well, they've had them. 10 days of rest. That's what I mean. That's, yeah. what, that's why I'm right. asking that question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, would, I would definitely consider Jameis, <coughs> excuse me, to play possibly this weekend, be in the conversation. <coughs> excuse me. It's all right. You There's beer right there if you need it. I feel like allergies. Yeah, hey. Good God. South Louisiana is good for a lot of things. Allergies not. <laughs> I'm allergic not so to much. everything too. That yeah. doesn't help. Yeah, allergies <laughs> not so much down here. Um, yeah, I would expect him to be in the conversation. Um, <clears throat> Landry. All right, we do this all the time. Yeah, Landry. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> Landry, I, I think Troutman will play this weekend. I think maybe Andrus. Um, well, Michael I, Thomas. I don't, dude. Oh. I don't know. I Michael Thomas has been a toss up. Uh, the toe, what is it, toe turf? I believe it was turf toe. Turf toe? Yeah, I yeah, believe when toe. I see him get back to practice. He hasn't even been practicing. Turf toe looks, so. listen now, turf toe sucks. If it hurts. you have it bad enough. <laughs> have any of y'all had it? Yeah. 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 It's, 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 it stinks. I've dealt with I it. I don't now. have COVID. You learn if you have uh, I don't I have COVID. COVID's, <laughs> COVID's over with. COVID's over with. We're, we don't, we don't talk There's about There's a new COVID. variant yeah. out. now. Like, the, it's <laughs> allergies. Yeah, we don't. I swear. We don't talk about COVID. Um. Cancer ever heard of it? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> is is there some feel, not necessarily around this team, but around, maybe around the fans and 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 people around New Orleans that, like Dennis Allen, may be like, there. on the hot seat, <laughs> like. Oh, uh, I don't. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. Um, now what if? I mean, no, this isn't this isn't a free question. Of, got a lot what of if Sean fight. Payton says I'm coming back next year to coach? Do they say okay? Uh, if you come back, we're firing Dennis Allen. I don't think he's come back to the Saints, obviously. He's probably no. going to the Cowboys. But, yeah. I actually brought that up to someone the other day. I was like, what if Sean Payton came back? And they're like, I don't think I don't think that would happen. He would, uh, like, he, I, I'm a very bit like, what if person? Yeah, what yeah, if yeah. this? What if that? That's like my toxic trait, I guess. You know, what if this? I don't think that would happen. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say Dennis Allen's on the hot seat, though. Yeah. 
So. Well, I would like to see them would, win some more games. Would Dennis Allen just be like, hey, look, I, I, this is my second time trying to be head coach. Didn't work out in Oakland. Obviously, now the Las Vegas Raiders. That place is toxic. But would Not he anymore. Just, <clears throat> I think it's I know, I think but, it's but would he? Look, I know, but would he slide back and look, just be like, hey, I hey, love being defensive coordinator here. There's seven in. I don't think he's on the hot seat yet, but. Well, a, there's if, 10 to go. Here's the deal. If there's it 10 were to, go. to keep going this way, I think that is a. There's 10 to go. You would think that the way the division's shaping up, with the teams not playing very well, nine, eight <clears> wins? <throat> nine wins can win the division, maybe? Yeah, I think nine right? wins is a very strong chance of winning the division. So you're, you have to win seven of 10. Yeah. If that's the case. Somebody's got to get hot. Got to get hot. Somebody you has to. Got to play well. I mean, I would, I would hope. And it, I would hope, everyone would hope, and expect that the Saints, like, they need to, they need to beat the Raiders, right? And then go on a run and get hot. Right. Like, that, like, needs to happen. And I expect that to happen. If they lose to the Raiders, yeah, I don't know. Well, here, and here's the deal. Like, you look at, before the season started, if you looked at the schedule, you're like, damn, starting with... Uh, Cincinnati, like that stretch of five games is probably the hardest stretch of the season, right? And still may be, but Cincinnati wasn't coming off playing great football right. when we played them. Oakland's right. been very inconsistent. LA's been very inconsistent. Uh, who else do we have in that? No, this has been no, bad. The, the Cardinals Ravens. have been very inconsistent. <clears throat> yeah. Um, actually, Cardinals have been bad. The Cardinals LA's been, been bad, bad too, yeah. And then it's just so – so now like those games that you felt like – no, it may be tough, but you felt like, oh, we're not – they're, they seem like, okay, if we write the ship, we can win it, right? Mm-hmm. And You sound like the Saints right now. Like, <laughs> just trying to explain it. Well, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yeah. they maybe lose. So, they, they, they're seven games in, and they've, they've been in every single game. Now, they haven't made the, the play that they needed to win to win the game, but yeah. they've been in every game. Yeah, and, and uh, Demario said today, we, we need to get our swagger back. How do you do that? How do you do that? First of all, win. you win. You win and you get some confidence back. So they need they need to beat the Raiders, and then um, from there, I feel like you get in a groove. And they yep. haven't been able to do that. And I think that also takes everybody being on the same page, and everybody feeling a sense of urgency. Like yeah. uh, in a uh, what was it the um, the Bengals post game interview with Adam Troutman? He was like, "We're not. We didn't hit panic mode. Like we didn't hit." And I'm like, "Okay, now it's panic mode." everyone should be on panic mode. Yeah. Well, which is well, fine. Well, I'll ask this question then. If it was, we need to get our swagger back, mm-hmm. new coach, new situation, two and five start, did it have the feel that everyone was really bought in from the start? Uh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Uh, Demario said today, this is literally not where anyone expected to be. And I was sold. I mean, I was getting in heated debates with, you know, guys at the bar, like, they're Super Bowl contenders. I'm sure you can't guys, tell me I'm otherwise. I'm sure guys love that. <laughs> yeah, loved it. No, they, I, that. They, were, they were like, no, they're not. Like, no, they're not. I'm like, we have this, we have that, we have, this is the reason, like, really, like, back you up. You got charged you got tired. Yeah, right. They're watching now. I'm like, man, I... Oh, just wait. I was just, wrong. We'll I'll admit I you. was wrong. Then you, yeah. drive, <laughs> then, wait, then you draft a lava and you're like, damn, this is the best receiver room I think the Saints may have ever had. Yeah. And then, then like they, they haven't they been played, they've only been on the yeah, field together played. for what, one game and yeah. then Alave was a, like the first game of his yeah. career, so like it's not gonna be Yeah. You know, I'd expect when they come back, Alave has obviously been balling out. Yeah. He's been he's really a gem, good. Truly. Right? Like, he he's, really is good. He's a bright spot and really special for And so you would imagine like, hey, he's back. Okay, now he kinda already knows his role. Michael Thomas knows his role, Jarvis. You would assume yeah, that they would be able to fit right in. Bench. Okay, negative Nancy. Well, okay. I'm just he's saying. Just, I mean, he's, he has a hurt. He's injured. He's but hurt. Brad Roberts got shot, and he's on the football field. Hey, he missed some games though. He hurt. missed some games though. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> missed some games. He got back. I have confidence. Listen, I don't. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Me either. I like to see. Him. Have either. you met Lloyd yet? By the way, I don't know if you've met him yet. <laughs> I told you she was gonna snag it. No doubt. Um, but like you know, it's you. It seems like when you watch them play, mm-hmm. they are in every. And it's, it's like a stretch of like four minutes, and it's like oh, the game's <laughs> over in four minutes, right? Like you played the Bucks, you had the game under control. Yeah. You fumble. All of a sudden, four minutes later, you're down two touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. You have the game under control against, um, against Cincinnati. You go down there, you don't score a touchdown, game's over in four minutes. Same thing with with uh, the yeah. Cardinals. It's just like all these things happen. You're in every game. You're winning games. You feel like – I'm watching the game. I'm thinking you're dominating this game, and all of a sudden you look up and you're like, how did we lose that? 
Right. You know, it just feels like they're so close. Yeah. And I don't know how you fix that. Yeah. To to, to go ahead. No, I, I agree with you. Um, I think... I, I think they might not even know. I think that's you know what they're yeah. what they're trying to figure out and um, go back. They're not to, careful. If they're not careful. It's going to become a pellet. Be careful. Cool. Dangerous. Yeah. If you're not, uh, that's well, a, a Russell Wilson. Got that's a Russell Wilson too, commercial. So. It, oh, okay. The Subway commercial. <laughs> if, yeah. If they're not careful, if they're yeah. not careful, they're going to become a Pelicans town because the Pelicans are you know exciting and doing whatever. But well, what I was going to say, it's almost like the anti LSU. Like LSU is doing the same things that like everything the Saints are doing. The LSU is doing the opposite, where the Saints are up early in every game. And it feels like in control. Then it goes haywire. LSU is out of every game, and then flip the switch. If you put them together, that would be great and yeah, play a complete that's, game. Okay, well, I don't think that's what you can do. I know, but I'm just no. I'm just saying from a like a perspective. A of, what if? A yeah, what, what if? Your what if? You're back trade. to your what if. Yeah. <laughs> You're back to your what ifs. Um. I mean, I'd like to see him. Louisiana. Well, no, just say that, like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like the Louisiana, it's, this is what Louisiana is. You either get one or the other. Yeah, I mean. Eh. What? You can have the best of both worlds. 2019. No, that was just one side. <laughs> that was just one I know, side. that's all, I don't see one. I don't know, I'm an optimist. Me too. I'm, I'm okay, a big so, optimist. So Me too. From your optimistic all, She's mind. the only pessimist in this. So, we got, it, so what are you? I'm an optimist. Oh, I'm no, a realist. I'm a, I'm a realist. I'm a Pisces. Optimist. Somewhere in there. <laughs> hey, she just she likes signs. You're a Pisces, eh? <laughs> yeah, the fish. Emotional. <laughs> oh, oh, he's definitely no clue. high. Emotion. He's definitely there not. A, he's definitely the not highs. emotional. <laughs> uh, definitely high. <laughs> <laughs> um. So wait, all right. So then, big optimist, ten day stretch, kind of get to watch the Cardinals game away. What is your expectations of what you'll see the next time they go out and play? Um, I think. And I hope that they are going to be angry, motivated, and there's no other option but but winning. I, I think they pull out a win on uh, Sunday. I think they do. I hope so. But I, I, but I also thought other things and was wrong about yeah, that. Yeah, me so. too. I mean, but that's the optimist in us. I, <laughs> you know? I, uh, I mean, listen, they, they, don't, they, don't play, they don't play bad. They haven't played bad football. They just played. They've had bad sports. outside of one game. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah outside, But they just yeah, played bad. They're bad good. Sports. Good team playing bad football. Yeah, the yeah. Carolina Panthers was bad football. That was yeah. a bad game. Can't happen. Uh, Can't. It, it uh, really Arizona cannot. Games kind of There's no gimme games. games. Yeah, true. Yeah, they didn't play very well in that game. Sure. Coming yeah, off. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm coming off the Arizona game, is that going to be the impetus to put Jameis in? Do you think that kind of almost had to happen because Andy has played. Somewhat Solid. well. He's managed yeah. the game, but yeah, after you see him do... No, that's th- the reason he was there, that's is a, to manage it. That's a great point. Um, I I think that was an opportunity and a chance for him to honestly maybe take Jameis' starting role, right? right? Didn't do that. That game proved that Jameis should be the starting quarterback. Um, so, yeah. Do you have a feel from like the fan base that... So you watch... You watch the Cowboys have their starting quarterback go down. Backup comes in, yeah. no name. They go four and one. Right. They're right in the thick of everywhere they want it to be. Mm-hmm. Do you have a feel that the the New Orleans fan base is kind of down on how this is going down when Jameis is going down and it, the team really hasn't found its footing at all and during this time? I think fans here, like, <laughs> it's actually – it's it's really awesome. It's awesome if – a team loses or a player plays poorly. Yeah. Families go home at dinner and it's silent. Oh, yeah. Like, they're oh, hurting. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's painful. And I think, um, I think that uh, they're right there with them. And that if things start to go well for the Saints, then, like, is that kind of answers your question? Yeah, I was kinda, yeah. well, because here's like the deal. You go in the Superdome, right? And the yeah. Superdome is known for being electric and whatever. But, like... When they don't win, the yeah. Superdome can be real quiet. When you, now, that's, that's very true. That that's is, very true. Let's be honest. Like If you walk out of a, a Saints mm-hmm. loss, yeah, that is it, a it very is quiet. quiet dome to walk out of. 100%. It's, even even if it's one that goes up until the end, like that's a very quiet dome to walk yeah. out of. I don't, I don't think fans have written them off right. at all. I think they're right there with them. And I, I, I literally think fans are like waiting to be like, we're waiting for you to, yeah. to turn this season right. around. And yeah. My my question a few days ago was kind of like, what are they playing for right. at this point until we kind of found out that they're, they still have a chance of mm-hmm. making the playoffs? I'm like, I, like look, play for pride. Right. Like, this is such an iconic team. 
and fan base and like you're you're the New Orleans Saints like right. I I literally think they they for I go in the locker room you're the New Orleans Saints get out of here. Like, who is this Warnell. who is this reporter Warnell. who is this reporter from Wikiwachi Florida telling us what to do right? Mississippi Run yeah. over here it's crazy to say that because twenty five he's from Tampa twenty five years ago you couldn't say that about the Saints you right. couldn't say I was an iconic organization right. the Saints right like they weren't very good yeah. Yeah. they had one like one playoff game in their in their history. Mm-hmm. Now, you've built it up to being one of the best, most well-run organizations and iconic. To where, like, hey, you yeah. know, you're going to see them. It's going to be a dog fight. It's going to be loud, and you just kind of feel like we've lost yeah. that over the last couple of years. So I'm with you. I think if you have to give somebody, especially Louisiana fans, something to buy back oh, into, God, yeah. and if you do, it's a little glimmer of hope in there. It's 100. I think yeah. the hope is still there. 100. percent Hope. See, that's the big word. Oh, hope. Yeah, I, I admit it. We're in the worst division in football. I have hope. I mean, if you can't beat the Panthers, who apparently found their next head coach, I don't even know who I, it is. I know. I know. Oh, you I mean think, the guy I, that's kicking guys out of games? Yeah. Robbie Harris, <laughs> you get, you get, go get traded. That guy also was a failed head coach. Yeah. Um, that was rude. At Arizona, right? Was it Arizona? <laughs> he was in Arizona. And then, one year. Uh, what? One year. Yeah, one year. It wasn't very good. But Wilkes. Wilkes, yeah. Is that his name? Um, Cliff took his job. How's that going? Cliff ain't going to be there much longer either, I don't <laughs> think. Beat the I don't know. I know. Why yeah, is that? I don't know. They got Saints a little screaming match. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who? You didn't Cliff see? and Kyler. Oh, yeah, and yeah, he yeah, argued right. with his child. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kyler looks like well, a child. Maybe yeah. Kyler right. specifically yeah. told him some very choice words that were very... You could read the lips on those. What do you say? How do you guys feel about that? I don't mind it. The encounter. Well, it depends. Between them. I don't mind it. Just judging off of Cliff's uh, demeanor after, it seems like he felt like he was kind of overboard or whatever he did because he there was no like it just stopped after. Uh, just a, it, to me, it depends on like like was that you, did, like, do you think that was is, disrespectful? Is, eh, it depends it just, on their relationship. Yeah, yeah it depends on the relationship. But, but you also don't and the respect. Like, have you earned that yet? Like Tom Brady's earned that whenever he can get in the offensive corner of his face right now. Well, those two are married. Tom's to going through too, some so things I right now. Tom's Tom, Tom, Tom Brady is also Tom Brady. <laughs> well, Tom's okay, lost so some Tom, weight but I, I in feel the like face. You have, <laughs> looks like Skeletor. <laughs> yeah, I think the TB12 is a little... It's it's too, too, yeah. I don't know if it's TB12 or maybe the impending divorce that's going... I don't know what's happening with Tom. <laughs> Tom's doing some, some, he's he's stressed going through out. some things right now. You can't now. say that, man. We can't put that on his life. I'm not... I am. ETV I know or you whoever are. TMZ put that out there. Lloyd, <laughs> Lloyd, Lloyd, Lloyd works for Howard page six. Howard Stern, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying anything about that. What do you, no, you, think, what do you think about yeah, that? No. <laughs> leave that? Just leave no. that here because Lloyd will literally, he'll, he'll you drag guys, you in. I'll let y'all talk about he'll that. He'll drag you in. The whole point is you have guys that have earned the respect to be able to go up to a coach and disagree with that coach, right? I don't think as Kyler has earned that. Now, I don't know how the interaction, I don't know what was said, yeah. to, but – Kyler literally had a clause in his contract that he had to watch film. To me, that shows you that you haven't earned anything yet, right? And then you've played like poo poo this year, and like how how can you it's come very out descriptive. and say, you know, what I mean, like, how can you say, oh yeah, by the way, you know, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get my my head coach's face. Like, I just I don't think he's earned that, but I don't know how the interaction well, started. I mean, it's such a weird situation because you're not wrong. He hasn't earned that, but has Cliff. Kingsbury earned, earned their no, respect there, so you, like you get what I'm saying. Like it's a very well, weird dynamic they have. Earned there. the NFL job. Cliff wasn't very good at Texas. That, that's my yeah. point. So my point is, is like, all right, well, did he earn this too? Because like, the, the, I guess you know the respect should kind of yeah. be, and Perfect it's not marriage. really what you got there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't like. It didn't throw me off, but it's also one of those times where it's like. Camera caught something that you don't usually get a chance to catch. Like you don't usually get a chance to see those reactions. And cameras catch everything now. And if you're, oh, <laughs> they're all over. Oh, they're everything. all over. Yeah. Everything. There's no secrets on the sideline. Anymore. And if you're the Saints, you you lost that game. Whatever they're having a. a this was early match. on too. Yeah, it was like it was boiling over to the point where you could have buried the Cardinals, and instead, yeah. you end up throwing three picks. So like you would would you think that like the Saints would be like that on the sideline. Like, right. I, I honestly... I don't think they I, have that relationship yet, where they're, like, good, bad, or indifferent. They don't know DA or is like that. Well, the, or is that the vibe? They don't have the them. same... In my mind, they don't have the same camaraderie, whether it be good or bad, like, with... Andy Dalton's not going to do that. Jameis mm-hmm. isn't going to do that. Jameis loves to fight, though. He got his hands in somebody's <laughs> well, eyes also... again. <laughs> But I think those happen too there's, between there's no like con- there's no continuity whether it be good or bad. Well, I the think Saints don't even have that much of a rapport to even get in a fight yet. Yeah, I, but I think you get I think you get those kind of like situations whether you actually see it or you don't between quarterback 
play caller head coach situations yeah. and that yeah. the Saints don't have that. And I, right. In a sense of like Dennis Allen's a defensive play caller. Yeah. Like, so you're not going to get that. And so. I think that, I think you're kind of spot on with there's not a leader on the offense. Like nobody stepped up to be that guy, right? If there was that guy, he would be the but, one to but, step up. Yeah, dude, that. but, but that's why I, like it's weird when you watch him play this year because it's, Drew was the leader for ever. Like mm-hmm. it was known, right? And then now two games into it, you're, you're starting quarterback who is, you know, inherently you would think would take over the leader spot well he's got his back's messed 18 up 18 injuries and so now he's not on the field so now there's where you're trying to because think right. about it if you think about those last couple of years in his in drew's career when he was hurt they spotted a little bit they kind of stayed around the 500 right over 500 but you kind of saw some of the same stuff and then when he come back it was you know a well, jolt is, of life a little bit is that weird for Jameis to speak up if he's not playing like can he no, still I, be in the locker room being like you get your stuff together yeah, you get your he stuff can, together but i think it's a you know it's, or is it like a, like i, I don't it just know works it different when level. you're out there and when you're not or, or, yeah. or, you know it there's just also, is there's also the side of it that you know maybe they are calm because they do have that quiet confidence like hey you know what like right we have the we know that we have the ability and we know that we have the players and we know that we've been in eight, all of the games that we've played in. So we need to do our job, but we're confident in doing our job and we can write the ship. Maybe that now that's my optimist coming out of me, but like there's also the other there's also the other side of it. Like, hey, and maybe I, you don't yeah. need maybe they do have the fire, they just yeah. don't need to vocalize it. I don't know. And I and I do think you're right. Like getting your swagger back comes with winning a game, but I sincerely think for them to really get their swagger back they need the dudes that are supposed to be the dudes yeah. on that team on the field. Well, and one play can do it, right? Like, yeah, every game has happened. You've lost the game because you haven't made the play to win. Right. Yeah. You've made the opposite play. Yeah. The other team has made the play. Jamar Chase is the 60-yard touchdown catch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't make the tackle, right? Now, mm-hmm. you flip that. Okay, now let's make this weekend. Maybe they say, okay, we're going to go in the third quarter, fourth quarter, whenever that play happens, you make that play, sack, fumble, pick six, 60 yard touchdown. Yeah. And you're like, okay, oh, and you feel like everybody can exhale, like, okay, we're back. And then you just kind of, that's how you can kind of start, yeah. start they, the train. They did that. They've scored on like the second play of the game to somebody. That's not, the, but that's not, that's not a pivotal They make in explosive the game. plays, yeah. but they, they also give up as many. Right. They're yeah. running out of toes to right. shoot. Right. I'm not talking about the kind of needs to happen. Play. I'm talking when, about the, the pivotal moment of the yeah. game. Yeah. Like it it kind of needs play. to happen when there's either, like, like you said, pivotal moment, close game, either, or you're getting blown out or beat early in a game you're and you turn the, it on finally and you turn the game around. You're playing it the Bucks. It has to happen in situations And there's like a penalty. You lose, you lose the fumble and then the guy, and then Tom makes the one throw of the entire game that he made and has a touchdown. Maybe you bat that down. Okay, that's the one. You know what I mean? Like yeah. those plays, like the 50-50 plays that you think that, okay, one way or the other, that's going to determine the game. Like we haven't really made those. They haven't made those. I'm not part of the team. I'm just a fan. <laughs> just a fan. I'm just yeah, a fan. I mean, I think the, the questions are like, is – is that play calling? Is that because we don't have our best players out on the right. field right now? Like no one, I feel like really knows exactly what yeah. it is. And right. again, I don't even think they quite know exactly what it is. I just think like they always preach any, anytime we talk to them, they're like next man up mentality. Now, obviously you're talking to camera. So like, what, what are you saying behind? Like, I don't know, but they, they always say, next man up mentality which is why i even feel like i've kind of bought into that which is why you know you you say they they do need their best players back but i I almost feel like that's that's not an excuse and it's not a reason for them to lose because their next man up mentality like this this player is just as good as like or important as you know the ones who aren't on the field so i don't know i feel you i agree but i also expect more from their teams i guess 100 percent um, I mean, I hope, hopefully they write the ship. Hopefully you're right and they get a win this weekend. Yeah, and I'll be there. I'll let y'all know. Yeah, yeah let me know. <laughs> let y'all know details. So you go to every game? Uh, every like, home game. Every home game. Yeah, I went to the Falcons game. Any um, away games? Just the Falcons this oh, season. No. Um, I don't typically travel. Okay, so I actually, I went, <laughs> <laughs> I went last year um, to the away game and uh, I kind of killed two birds with one stone, like went home to see my family, but also Work. covered. The, yeah, and I was like. Did you get caught in the traffic going home? That's kind of a long ride. Uh, I flew. Oh, my <laughs> oh God. yeah, there you go. But, <laughs> but uh, I was like, man, I, don't, I, I shouldn't have done that. It's hard. It was like you get in like hanging out with your family and then, yeah. oh, you got to go to work. But, I mean, going to work is covering Saints, so yeah. I didn't mind. Try having much. them come visit you in the middle of the yeah, New York stink. City when you have to do, want to do all these things you can. You got to go, damn, I got to go to the field. For 18 hours in the day. Things that you're yeah. complaining about right now are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Like a long> <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. 
Um, because Lloyd's the optimist, so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me swim. We uh, I appreciate you coming in. Yeah, thanks fun. for having me. Sorry you, for n- n- not having COVID. Having no, you cough don't. Attack. No, 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 you don't. No, no, that doesn't happen to me in like years. No apologies you guys? needed. It must be the studio. I, it must yeah. be a, yeah, but no, something in here. Listen, can't come back. Listen, we do. He calls more than anybody I know. I don't have a voice. <laughs> Lloyd, I'm right Lloyd has thrown up on set before. <laughs> so. Okay, I don't, I don't feel as bad. Yeah, yeah, so you're good. Listen, it's part of the show. It's, it's what you get. You can hang yeah. out. We have like 12 minutes left on the show. You can hang out the rest of the show cool. and just kind of let us close it out. But yeah. um, we appreciate you coming in. Yeah, thanks happy, for having Happy that you're in Louisiana. Have you, have you enjoyed Baton Rouge, I'm assuming? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I good. am allergic to shellfish, so I haven't been able to enjoy it. Oh, so that's what you yeah. wow. That's what it was. That's that's you and, uh, yeah, that's what it, You guys yeah. got some shrimp in here? Yeah, we do have oysters. Damn, so you can't eat. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. Wait, that low-key no, 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 might... No, no, you're no, no, lying. I'm not. You're well, lying. Have, no, that have, that might be what it is. In the freezer. Bayou Carlin Oyster Co. What the shuck every Monday. <laughs> no, because my throat like literally close up and I'm like, oh wow. no, I we got her. We're gonna kill her. We're gonna kill her in here. Was, Jesus, Lord, you gotta let her know that. I didn't do it. It's your fault. You didn't fill out the form we asked about if you had any food allergies. You didn't fill out the questionnaire. You didn't fill out the questionnaire. I didn't sign the waiver. Yeah, jeez. Okay. Um. All right, let's shut it down. We have ten minutes. I want to get to. Wait, do you have you still have flag today? I told you it's the playoffs. I know it's the playoffs. How do you feel? Feel good. That I moved out of the quarterback position. Oh, so I, you get, <laughs> wait, so you, you lost your job? Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> wait, time out. No, no, we no. We said that's so boy. Like, wait, 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 wait. I, feel I good. Need to, lost my job. Give me the full explanation right now. I did not lose the job. It was that was I, nice wording right I there. I had a conversation with our the captain who drafted me. Right. The I said, captain said, hey. Captain. Oh, I talked <laughs> to him. Do you actually draft? You draft? Yeah, we have, they have a draft. This is legit. Yeah, yeah it was great. And so I <laughs> talked to him, and I was like, hey, listen. To be the quarterback. These are the, these are the plays that I want to do, right? I told him, I was like, listen, I if we're not going to be throwing the ball down the field, right? <laughs> I want I want the ball. Like, I think that we're better off with me and him in the backfield. And I'm so I'm like, okay, so we're doing that. I'm in the backfield this I just so gave away my game plan to the opponent. You yeah, it, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a mutual conversation between me and him. <laughs> oh yeah, oh. Tom Brady and Giselle. Nice working mutual. relationship. Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, I actually have a funny story. The okay. Saints media did a flag. We had a flag football game. Did How'd you, you do? Dude, I was up all night studying the route tree. I'm oh, like, look at her. what's go- no, I like, I actually swear on my life. How'd you do? Oh, I walked up, I was stretching. They're like, what is I doing? cleats on everything? Oh, I got cleats. Heck yeah! Gloves? And my quarter, no. Mm. But I had someone did offer me gloves, and I was like, ah, I don't want to be done. It'll be too much. You should have done and, it. And I literally asked, asked our quarterback, I was like, so where, where do you want me? Like, you want me to slant? You want me to go? Like, where, you know? And he's like, just get open. And mm. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know how many like, routes, you know like, routes I just ran? And literally, I walked Took an away Adderall for this? Like, yeah. <laughs> Energy drink, study and film online. Like, can't even see straight. No, but it was mean? terrible. We had no game plan. The other team, you know, they huddled up at before every play. You know, oh. you're going here, you're going. Us, we just get that's open. Our issue. I'm like, that's that, our, okay, that's so our that's issue. what's going on here. <laughs> that's you our fix issue. that. Well, you he's the quarterback. That. I was a quarterback, and did um, tell people where to go. I I try to draw the play up in the dirt. Okay, that's your play. that's the issue. What's the problem? You gotta, you have so little, they made the little... mutual decision that he was going to catch him instead of <laughs> instead of throw. Him. Well, I have five rushing touchdowns, so they said <laughs> we're just going to not let you. We're just going to let you run. <laughs> he won't throw it, so we're just going to let you run that You're thing. Just Jaden Daniels in week four. I said, you know what? Like, listen, I'm just going to run, and I just started running, and so I'm like, okay, well, if you're going to run, we don't have to throw the ball down. The whole well, point was well, like, is the, the new ball. quarterback distributing the ball, or this is going to be a first game quarterback? It's his second game. He started. Okay. It was the first game, so he's going to distribute the good. ball. Uh, we lost the first time, <laughs> but he's gonna distribute the ball now. Boy, now, now we changed right now. we changed it to where now we both have the op, op the ability to throw it. So like I'm going to be behind. So him. we so just if, throwing laterals back and double, forth. If it's a double rush, he's throwing the ball behind me, and I'm double passing. Listen, we got some things going. Oh all right, goodness. it's gonna be all right. But that's not what I want to talk about. Sounds like we have a little time left. I bet not. I want to talk about the World <laughs> Series. The World Series matchup is set. One likes right? the motions. You have two LSU guys, Bregman with the, with the Astros again. Yeah. It's like the sixth, fourth time in six years yeah. in the World Series. And then Aaron Nola, who I feel like is like my little brother, is in the World Series. I texted his mom, and she's fired up. It was kind of bittersweet, obviously, because Austin. Yeah, one of them was coming home. Out. Yeah. Um, his react, the father's reaction was one of the funniest uh, things of all. Yeah. Um, 
but his eyes were going all over the place. It's um, Where did the, the Phillies jersey with the Padres hat. He's I'm happy to be here. I don't think the Phillies like. I want the Phillies to win, but if the Phillies do win, apparently. A trend of every time the Phillies have won a World Series, there's been a depression that follow. Oh, well, the, we, this, well economic depression. We've already had it. The so optimist. Maybe, it's already started, so maybe they will be winning this one. Who knows? True, 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 true. Maybe, but um, we kind of talk baseball, so we got to talk about it. But that's it. That's over. Now let's go to the segments, and then we're done. I've been siphoning gas from my neighbor. What? <laughs> um. <laughs> all right, not that's my a fault. Thing still? Not my fault. Still brought to you by Dozy Place. Go give them. Not my fault. I like this not my fault because I'm I'm against it. Oh, yeah. Ooh. LSU, obviously, we saw what happened on Saturday. Big win, right? Everybody's excited, a little ecstatic. Was it my fault, not my fault, worthy to storm the field? No, no. <laughs> it's not worthy to storm the field that not weekend. On, and, and not only... See? Was it... You won, you won, the, you were the best team in the history of college football, you beat arguably. Beat 25. Are you, huh? You beat them by 20. You were favored. You beat them by 25, and it's Ole Miss, right? It's not like you're being a team that you haven't played, and you won a national championship three years ago. These last two years have been doom and gloom. I get that, right? But we've passed. We've gotten past the point. And you our, have to. And un- our, you have to understand to rush feel. where the. This is look. I get it, man. Like young kids, you know, they wanted to. They they saw another school do it. They want to be able to do it too because it's probably very, very, very exciting. You know why? Because it's good for Instagram. And it's good I, for TikTok. Yeah. Right, right, right. For, for, for their own reasons, Michael, right? You're aging in front of me. No, no, no. no, no. no. Listen, I mean, I was, like, never, cool. I was they, in college. I didn't like social media. They like, want to do just, it for their own reason, but you, I think it's at a place like this, where this football program is. I don't care about the last two years in a sense of like where this football program is. Like it takes more than two years to say the program's just like not good anymore right right where the program is like you got to kind of respect and know that like these games you're you're expected to win especially anytime they're at home like let's just be honest right when we were in school here we're sitting here watching them go through games to go through like 30 game win streaks at home like you're expecting them to win every time they play here right so with that being said if that's still the expectation if that's still the thought this is not a place where you should be storming the field. Yeah. I'm just going to be I think it, it builds some, like, I don't know. It amplifies things a little bit. Like, it kind of gets people excited. Like, I agree. What? I think they're too too good right. to storm the field. But, I don't know, in a sense, it, like, well, elevates but it also the energy. It, was, it also felt like it was kind of a half-assed storm. Like, they yeah. just, it like, was. No, 100% you know? it was. It was. It was. Like, like I don't know if I should. Oh, I guess they're going to go somewhere and <laughs> jump in, yeah. too. Well, after after the game, I, my my uh, boss was out there live, and I, and I tossed to him from uh, the studio, and I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, uh, the, they storm the field. Like, what's it like out there? And then it's like half the field. It's like, like uh, some like, of them. But someone's like, like, oh, let me go hang out with the team. And yeah. not, like, really, well, like, it was literally the guy that's from the field, Marwan from Southern, where they just kind of sauntered out. They're like, oh, I guess I'll go get a good Marwan. look at what Tiger's thing like, looks like. Like when I, watch, when I watch Tennessee storm the field, and it's they really hadn't had you a meaningful win in 15 years. I can deal with They've that They've been one. 0-15 against Alabama over the last 15 years, and now they just beat them to get into the top 10. And they beat him 52-49. Like, I'm cool with them. So yeah. That's when you do it. That, like, yeah. when is the last time Tennessee's won a game that big? Damn sure. wasn't two years ago. They weren't the best yeah. college team two years ago. Of all time. So, uh, do you, you think know. LSU will beat Storm them? I think they got a chance. You think, if, you think beat them or Storm Dude, the field? I, I'll tell you. They'll my, definitely Storm the field. They shouldn't Storm the field. Even, no, even, even if they would be an all-time flex if you don't Storm the field. Even if they – Yeah, yeah really it they really would. It really would. That would be a flex. That would be a flex. That would be a flex. I don't know if they beat them now. I, think I, they I don't. I, I just. I reason why. Only reason why. I'm just going. To, I'm gonna tell it right now because it's probably not going to change my mind. I don't think they win simply because I think they have an X factor on the other team. Bryce, Bryce Young. Young. Just give it. I think the guys. Like say a special very, very good. I think yeah. he's a very, very good quarterback. And I don't think. I don't think he needs. I think they got the right quarterback also, this year. Also. Also. Not only do they have Bryce Young, their running back is. Oh, he's got. Un- so wait, I was just about to say like I don't think <laughs> the emotion. I don't, that just no, he, like thing. Gibbs is unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah, I don't think they. So what you what you're used to seeing like good offenses from Alabama do the last couple of years. He don't even need guys to just blow the top off like that. He's he's so creative in the game. I, I think he's an X factor. Remember so, all the receivers that we were scared about, worried about them balling out their freshman year at Alabama. They're not doing much, huh? 
Yeah, I mean, you never yeah. know about recruits, baby. That's all I was trying to tell I, you when I, you were talking I'm about just, recruits. I'm just trying to. Just uh, never uh, know. Old butt chin, old, old, you don't know how they're going to be. Hey, old butt chin doesn't have a good game plan. It's not my fault. <laughs> oh, Bill yeah, O'Brien. Heisman trophy quarterback throwing on the football. Jeez. I could win the Heisman if, oh, I mean, God. I could coach. Oh, okay. Bryce oh, Young. God. Jesus. Enough. Oh, Bryce oh, Young. And, and Caleb, what's his name? Bryce? Enough. Yeah. So you don't even know his name. Yeah, I get him and Caleb Williams confused. You could, you could do what you want when you have a mullet, apparently. Hey, thank you. Yeah, and a do what you want when you have a mullet. Yeah, nothing. Hey, except every day be around, is my oyster. Except be around <laughs> children. <laughs> except be around children. You can't yeah, be around can't be children. Oh, school. But especially um, when the sun's down. What? Yeah. Huh? What? Okay, anyway. <laughs> Curry Calls. Uh, Curry Calls brought to you by Frankie Harris, Mr. Partners. Can you see this? There you go. Boom. Him. Um, give me your Curry Call. <laughs> Whoa. What a catch. Wow. It's a new microphone wow. for Mikey. He's so. an oh, that is a new yeah. mic. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. See, this is why they put you in the backfield. Look at the hands. Don't drop. Yeah. I haven't dropped anything since fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Communion? Um, give me your curtain call. Uh, my curtain call is on the screen right now, and it is courtesy of Tiger Droppings, and it is just Lane Kipping getting Nothing progressively like more sad. Like, you could see him the entire game. Boom. And then it just starts to happen. You can see the score on the bottom where he's like, oh, what the hell's going on? 24 20. Oh, no, now it's 44 to 20. And it's just. It's pretty good. That's why I really wanted the LSU job. Um, I have a couple of them. But the number one curtain call is whoever's running LSU's social media account right now. They're bad. Oh, they're, yeah. Holy yeah. crap. Cause I know who it is. Whoever it is is awesome. I'm not going to say. Don't say. Don't. <laughs> no, but you can tell them I said that because. The, the trolling them with the trolling them with the uh, set it off and little boosie and then coming back with the uh, what else did they say they, they did two maybe it was well, two little they boosie did trolls. well no they did the um, LSU storm the field which was you know old you got old there for a second but they said they shouted out Tennessee saying we'll find a different way to pay the funds we're not asking for any money so that, that was too. a great curtain call by LSU be like. We got the fine. We're and not asking for my money. My second current call is to the Phillies, and not just because they want it, right? It's because I have a future on them? No, because I have a lot of friends on that team that I played with, and I'm very pumped for those Rough guys. Rough Neto Dwarf? If you look at the, he's not on the team. <laughs> he's not on the team. If you look <laughs> at the not, video of Nick Castellanos, like, that's my guy, right? Like, that is my, one of those, we played together in Detroit. You got traded there, and he signed there, and like. I don't know if I'll be wearing this headset again. He's dancing all over the place, and it's awesome. What do you mean? You don't remember the announcer from Nick Castellano? It's a deep drop to left. Oh, yeah, well, that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about him just dancing and getting beer poured all of them. And then Bryce Harper did what Bryce Harper was paid to do, hit the homer in the eighth inning, put him in the World Series. So those are my current calls. Well, when does the World Series start? Friday. Friday. Well, he just mentioned mine, so, I mean, it doesn't matter. Oh, I was, mine, mine was literally going to be to Bryce, but I was like, well, he's going Philly. She's like, hard Philly. So I'm just going to be like, uh, I mean, this guess is in there. And then you said it. I'm sorry. Too. It's okay. Sorry. But if, for people that didn't know uh, – Two, two, two out, one out, Homer? Down one. Down one in the eighth. Yeah. Up I mean, if you, if you really, like, just turn the volume up and just listen to that place after the bat. Also, the, bat, uh, the ball left the bat. He was calm as can be, too. Oh, he knew it. And it was. I thought he was going to get five rows deep, man, and it was, it was super calm. Yeah. yeah it was, but shout moments out. Moments like that are cool, so shout, shout out. out to that. That's uh, what makes baseball great. Appreciate everybody listening. Appreciate everybody tuning in. We'll be back live at our normal time on Wednesday, 6 to 8. PM oh, hey, um, from here, and we'll be live from Uncle Earl's 4 30 to 6 on Friday. Can't make it. Can throw it in? Ah! Hey. That was such a bad throw. Look at the avatar. Um, yeah. Bring it in. Uh, and uh, we are. Oh! oh. oh. Athlete! Oh. Curtain oh. call! Oh. Athlete! Oh. Oh. We need that. We need an extra receiver. Oh. Um, we're live from all podcast networks, Spotify and Apple. Please like, uh. subscribe. No, we better be. Mm. Better be. <laughs> here he is. There he is. Please <laughs> like, please like, subscribe uh, on our YouTube channel. We're almost at three thousand subscribers. Go ahead and go there and, and give us some more. We only need what thirty like, more. Like, 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 like. Thirty more. Um, yep. But we'll be back on Wednesday. Maybe Jay Johnson in studio. Not mm. in studio. Video call. Talk off week uh, football. Talk a little baseball. Uh, boys, supposed to be good. So, all right. Have a good night. Enjoy the stinky Monday night football game we got going on today. Uh, make a no, pick. No, I make need a it. pick. Make a pick. Make For a the pick. Monday night football game. Yeah. Patriots big. Patriots. Three defensive touchdowns. Eight and a half. As long Don't as, ask me why I'm saying it. As long as uh, <laughs> as long as Justin Fields doesn't do anything, I'm good. I need a win. Fantasy bad. 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 Uh, um, all right. Cares about your good night. Team. Peace.
Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. <laughs>